So not a Sunday match day on BBC Radio Suffolk. A bit sound at home to AFC Bournemouth. Former town captain Mick Mills and Brenna Woolley are your commentary team at Portman Road. Surely anything less than a win this afternoon is unthinkable for Ipswich Town. They can't get through Crystal Palace and Bournemouth at home with just one point or not even that. There's no avoiding the fact that Tuesday's disappointing defeat has piled even more pressure onto today. Uh, just a bump in the road as how midfielder Jens Kiyuste described the midweek loss, adding he's confident he and his teammates will bounce back immediately against the Bournemouth side who've had 48 hours fewer to prepare for this one. And Donny Ariola's men beat Tottenham on Thursday night to go ninth in the table at that stage. Stage and win today could take them up to seventh. Today they're trying to win three in a row for the first time this season. Incidentally, their eighth season out of the last ten spent in the Premier League. It is some achievement. They really are an inspiration to clubs like Ipswich, given the way the ascendant divisions have now established themselves as a championship promotion chaser at absolute worst. Out come the two teams from the tunnel off to our right-hand sides, both in their tracksuit tops. Town will strip those off to reveal blue shirts, white shorts and blue socks. I'm pretty certain that Bournemouth will be in their red and black stripes with black socks and black shorts. So Mick Mills, how, how do you view this one this afternoon? Well, I think it's, I think pretty much like every game that we have here. I, obviously, we've had bigger teams here already this season, but every team in this division, without question, are a good side. Um, and we can't get away from it. But every time we play here, we play in front of this fabulous crowd who make a big noise and it can have, a, have an effect on both teams. And I do feel that it normally sort of evens the teams up. I have every respect for what Bournemouth have done. They go in, in line with perhaps Brighton, Brentford, Fulham, you know, small clubs who you can forget about the name nowadays. They've sort of, they're recognised as big clubs, successful clubs. And uh, this is going to be a tough game. Uh, but I do feel that every time we're not losing by much when we lose games, we're always in touch of a result. And that's how I see this one today. Two sets of players shaking hands on the halfway line. Well, Town played on Tuesday, have made five changes this afternoon. Bournemouth, who played on Thursday, have made just the one. Uh, we'll start off with the Town team news. Harry Clark and Jack Clark are both out. So too can you stay Burns and Greaves. In come Johnson back from an injury. Burgess reinstated at centre-half. Taylor makes his full Premier League debut in midfield. And in that attacking three, Chaplin and Smoddix are reintroduced. So Murich again in goal. Uh, his back four, Johnson, O'Shea, with his head bandaged up after that cut the other night. Burgess and Davis, the two of Morsey, the captain, alongside Taylor. Incidentally, it's only Taylor's eighth league start for it, so it's down just the seven in the championship season. Uh, then a three, Hutchinson will play down the right-hand side. Chaplin, who we heard from earlier on match day, will be in the number 10 role centrally. And then Smodix off to his left. And Liam Delap plays up front. He's looking for his seventh goal of the season. On the bench, Walton, the two Clarks, Burns, Alhamidi, Broadhead, who came on the other night, Townsend, Phillips and Kiyuste. And the one change for Bournemouth from the side that beat Tottenham 1-0. It's fairly comfortable, though, by far the better side in that game and a good side at that. Uh, Adams drops out the American midfielder. In comes Cook into the centre of the park for them. They play a very similar system to Ipswich Town. Uh, Kepper on loan from Chelsea is their goalkeeper. The back four, the very experienced Adam Smith, the 33-year-old, he's the old head in there. The two and halves are Barney and Housen. They're only 22 and 19. Housen with the winner the other day against Tottenham. And Kirkes, really good player, destined for big things, the left back. Then the two, uh, Kuku I mentioned, his 150th Premier League appearance for the Jerrys. He plays alongside Christie. That was a nice interview we played of him a few moments ago. Then a three of Semenya, who's having a very good season. Clivert, who got the hat-trick of penalties last weekend. And Tavernier, Evan Nielsen, the Brazilian, who cost the best part of £32 million, is their central striker. On the bench, a couple of keepers, Travers and Dennis. And they also got Brooks, who was here in the win for Ipswich Town over Southampton at Easter time. He was on loan at the Saints then. Hill, Unal, Aaron's former a Norwich player, Kinsey, Billing and Watara. Watara, they looked lively uh, when he came on the other night, the left side of the attacker from Burkina Faso. Bournemouth are indeed in their AC Milan-like strips, the uh, red and black stripes. 
They are defending the end off to our right-hand side. So Ipswich Town defending the Sir Bobby Robson end, playing towards the Sir Alf Ramsey stand in this first half. And it is Connor Chaplin, who we heard from earlier on on match day, who is hovering over the yellow ball and play underway in yet another Sunday afternoon kickoff. Ripswich Town, Town immediately have somebody down off the ball. Morsey's flat on his back in the centre circle, totally off the ball because it's a head injury. The referees stop proceedings. And a few town players less than happy with the challenge on Morsey. They've gone straight towards the referee. That literally happened inside the first five seconds of this game. Now, this is going to be interesting to see what VAR have to say about this. Town players very unhappy. Dara O'Shea and Jack Taylor were first on the scene, uh, surrounding Michael Salisbury, the referee. How bizarre was that? Here we go, we're just going to see an action replay of this. And uh, Rosie slapped around the face by Clivert. No, they're both guilty. Uh, Sam Morsey, I'm wondering why Sam Morsey would be involved in something there. He's trying to sort of put a slight block on to make it more difficult for the player to uh, charge the back pass down that Connor Chapman plays the ball back to one of our centre-halves. Morsi steps in to do a block and the Bournemouth player just puts his uh, hand and arm around his neck and pulls him to the ground. So funny nothing. Clive was just re-enacting what he did. He was explaining to Morsi how it happened by again touching his uh, left cheek as the two of them were discussing the incident. Happily play back underway. Here is uh, Kirkes. Clara mentioned when I read out the team's few uh, moments ago, very, very highly regarded, being looked at by all the big clubs in the Premier League if reports are correct. The Serbian born Hungarian. Here is uh, Housen, who had a few wobbly moments against Tottenham the other night. He was the match winner. His pace got him out of difficulty. Yeah, Spanish under 21 international. Big ask from this afternoon, him and Zabani up against the battering ram of Liam Delap. Early thrown for town. Johnson gets it to Chaplin. Back to Johnson on this right side. Swiftly goes the in goes the challenge of Semenyu. He's having a really good season. Real threat in attack. The left-sided front player. Hutchinson, clever back heel to Johnson, who's carried the ball on. A couple of keepy uppies from him. Johnson inside the area tries to drive an early ball in. Tough Kirkes, town of one a corner kick inside the first two and a half minutes. Yeah, that's nice, and that started with a nice ball up the right touchline, turned the opposition defence round, make them face their own goal early in games. That's what we did, and that sort of made all that sort of passing near the corner flag possible. Here is Leif Davis, who had a loan spell with Bournemouth during the 21-22 season. 12 league appearances when he was borrowed from Leeds. He has this corner kick deep beyond the far stick. A player goes down, headed towards the centre, and then hooked wide by the lap. It might have been in the end. It's off target, but that was a real threat to Bournemouth early on. Yeah, there was a little block right on the back post to start with, which was good for us, and uh, it just enabled uh, us to sort of cushion the ball back across goal. Then the second touch was Liam Delaps and uh, not far away, good effort. Here is Housen, he's actually born in Amsterdam, but now a Spanish citizen. He clears to the halfway line, volleyed up in the air by the Australian Burgess, nodded on by Delap, likewise Chapman, just over the top of Smodix. Cleared away by Zabani, the Ukrainian playing at centre-half for Bournemouth, without Marcos Senesi at the moment at Bournemouth because of a an injury, he would be a, a regular starter for them. There is uh, Jack Taylor, what a 2024 it's been for him, promoted to the Premier League, made his international debut for Ireland, now he's a starter in the top flight. Poor from Murich, O'Shea eventually stretches and gets the ball away. Good hold-up play from Chaplin, lost the ball briefly. Taylor spreads it out to the right-hand side, Hutchinson, excellent ball from the former Peterborough player. Hutchinson, great collection, wants to take on Kirkes, it's going to be a good battle. Sliced ball across the field, headed away by the number 16, Tavernier, Taylor shoots, pings off the calves of Zab Zabani, Ipswich rebuilding, Johnson wants to take on Semenyu, Semenyu back as an extra left back, all hands on deck for Bournemouth, Burgess with a strong header forward, here goes Hutchinson against Kirkes already, it's worth watching this duel, Hutchinson's got the better of the Hungarian early on, here he is wide right, trying to get room for a cross on his left boot at the moment, still Amari Hutchinson stands on the ball, He's got Kirkes backing into his box. Hutchinson goes down just inside the area. Nobody, bar from two or three people in this row, Alf Ramsey asked for a penalty. Cleared by Cook straight at Morsey. It's been a good start, this from Ipswich Town. Five minutes gone, Morsey in field to Smodix. Smodix does very well, then the ball pings off of Hutchinson. Cleared away by Bournemouth, up towards Evan Nielsen with the gloves on. Came from 
Porto in the summer was a regular goal scorer for them. Here is Clivert, Justin Clivert, son of Patrick, Dutch international striker, his dad back in the day. He's a number 10 this afternoon. Bournemouth on the right hand side. There is their captain coming in field. Bournemouth have it with Tavernier to the right hand side. In comes the cross from Smith towards the fast stick, but Murich rises and takes his first catch of the afternoon. Yeah, I like this start because we've sort of had to sort of keep possession in some very tight areas, and each time we've come out with possession and it's kept us going. And uh, when we do that, I quite like it. It sends a message to the opposition that we're in business, you know, we're going to play well today and, uh, you know, it just makes them think a little bit. Almost the club that went from League Two to the Premier League in the space of five years under Eddie Howe, remarkable achievement. That They've never been in the top flight in their history until just nine years ago when these two sides met across a couple of seasons uh, in the Championship. All four of the games were draws, a couple of 2-2s, two a couple of 1-1s. One John Duncan, the last Ipswich Town manager to take three points off Bournemouth. And Harry Redknapp, the last Bournemouth manager to take three points off Ipswich Town. It's been a while since there was a, a league winner in this fixture. Smodix is beaten by Christie. Christie's done brilliantly. Clivert flying down the left-hand side up to the edge of the Ipswich Town area. Justin Clivert getting into the box almost well blocked off by O'Shea. He's in good form at the moment. Playing very well for Ipswich Town, Dara O'Shea. Here is uh, Johnson, Semenyo's over him. Johnson happy to pass the ball out just in front of right back. Kirkes is quick to take a replacement ball off a cone near side. Dara First. O'Shea did well, Sam Morsi did well. Ben Johnson was hesitant and that's caused us the problems. O'Shea and Burgess reunited after Greaves started in the week against Crystal Palace. Here is Antoine Semenyo. Former Bristol City player, cost Bournemouth £10 million, the Ghanaian. He's got this thrown outside the Ipswich area. It comes a long throw, headed away well by O'Shea, out as far as Zabani. Zabani lifts it back to the left-hand side, and Semenya, nice first touch from him. Shapes to get away from Chapman, plays the ball into the box. Bournemouth battling for edge of the area, cleared away by Ipswich Town, but Bournemouth in the centre circle with uh, Housen, who's around six foot five, the number two. The left hand side, Kirkes wants it. AC Milan, Kirkes on the right hand side, Adam Smith. He's played against town uh, in the past, very experienced player. Tavernier switches play to perfection. Nice take from Semenyo running with the ball into the box to Kirkes. Kirkes into the middle, it went right across the face of goal. What a chance for Bournemouth that was. It didn't look too far away from hitting that far post from Kirkes. Well, we've just seen what Bournemouth are all about. Helpson started everything well. He picked out uh, the guy up on the right touchline there, which was a good ball to start the whole thing off. And then a wonderful switch ball uh, to Semeno there. And uh, all of a sudden, they've uh, terrific run forward by the left back, Kirkus. And, oh. and what a ball in as well, you know. So that's the good side of Bournemouth. What a chance, it was Tavernier on the goal line, it hit him, but somehow didn't go into the net. Miraculous escape that for uh, Ipswich Town. Don't know quite how Tavernier actually got something on that ball, but didn't convert it uh, into the back of the net. Kirkes has gone down after a challenge from Delap just inside the Bournemouth half of the field. A win for them today, could take them up to... Uh, Seventh place, their best Premier League finish in 2017, uh, finished ninth. They're doing that ever so well. This is their best points tally ever in a Premier League season after uh, 14 games. This game number 15 for both of these teams at a windy Portman Road. I think the, wind, the rain has at least stopped. Housen asking too much of Semenyu. Overhit that ball to the left hand side. Little glance back in his direction from the left sided attacker. And there's the Wind picks up once again. Johnson back in the side for Ipswich Town, which is good to see. Some good form before that injury of his. Delap battling with House and getting the better of him. Delap down the right hand side, putting it in behind for Smodix, and Kepper will get there. Really good play from Delap. Wasn't a million miles away from finding Smodix inside the box. Well, both teams have almost thrown the ga gauntlet down, if you like. They've both sort of shown the, their opponents what they can do. So, good game at the moment. Yeah, it should be a good game between these two sides. There were those four meetings that I mentioned a few moments ago, and they were in the Championship together a few seasons ago. Bournemouth only had two years at that level before getting promoted. 
Semenya with a header on to O'Shea. O'Shea gives it to Taylor, gets it back. Three full island internationals in this Ipswich Town team uh, this afternoon. One of them, Taylor, goes back to Morsey. There is Johnson, loses out to Semenya. Semenya on the left-hand side, plays the ball forward to Clive it onto it inside the Ipswich Town area. No, he wasn't quite brilliant coverage of the ground by a very pacey Dara O'Shea. It's an underrated part of his game. He's very rapid across the grass. And he needed to be there. He did well. Hesitation from Ben Johnson again. Some players think that it looks bad to pass the ball back to the goalkeeper, but sometimes you just got to do it. It would have settled the whole thing down. One touch, back to the keeper, let's start again. But he wouldn't do it, and he got caught in possession. Ten and a half when it's gone, live on BBC Radio Suffolk Sport. Oops, it's Town's penultimate home game before Christmas. They're at Wolves this coming uh, Saturday. The ball headed out near side by Bournemouth play, just over the head of their manager Andoni Iriola, the uh, Spaniard in his second season. Didn't make seven appearances for his country, Spain, back in the day as a fullback. Iriola He's done very well at the Vitality Stadium. Ball back with Murich out towards Taylor. One of those five changes pre-match. Jack Taylor in for Cayuste. Housen, good header up towards Evan Nielsen. Evan Nielsen, edge of the area. Might fancy having a go. He does, comes off Burgess. Good defending. Header to down by Morsey, only to Tavernier, who started down the uh, right hand side. We expected it to be the left for Bournemouth. That's been a bit of a switch from recently. Semenya definitely on the left. Ball far side with uh, Zabani. He's brought down by Delap. Is it going to be another caution for. Uh, the lap this season? No, not quite. Yes, it is. Yellow card for uh, Liam Delap. It's his fifth in all competitions, but only his fourth in the league, so uh, he's all right for the weekend. He joins Morsey and Hutchinson on one more yellow card before a ban. Those would be three big players for Ipswich Town to lose. Heaven help us if that's all in the same game. Two, you can understand. One, you think, how did that happen? Yeah. Two very aggressive players and one non-aggressive player. Strange, isn't it? There is Zabani with a diagonal out to the left-hand side, trying to get Semenyo in behind Johnson. Johnson stretches and volleys the ball into the Sir Bobby Robson stand, which obviously means a corner kick for Bournemouth, their first of the game. That was really unnecessary. That Somebody could have been talking to him. The nearest Bournemouth player must have been 12 yards away from him. He didn't have to turn that immediately away for a corner. Kieran McKenna doing a lot of talking with the uh, fourth official down below us, Thomas Bramble. Corner kick to Bournemouth, their first of the game. Off to our left, towards the far post, well headed away there by O'Shea. Johnson's going to go after it in the left-back area. Briefly, out for a Bournemouth throw. Don't see this one ending nil-nil as Davis heads the ball away from the back, brought down by... Chaplin back in the side, headed forward by Taylor, chested down by Delap. Just have to watch himself now for a, a long while in this game, Liam Delap. Belted forward by Kirkes. It will be Murich's ball on the first bounce. Yeah, and it will give us a chance to just settle this game down now. This is Bournemouth have had a little bit of a, a good spell, if you like, and we've been a little bit untidy and indecisive as to what we're going to do. <gasps> Murich took a chance there. <laughs> you like supporters, Brenner. Goodness Nobody me. likes that straight ball, do they, from the goalkeeper oh, to the centre to get, midfield. He had to get it through two players, Evan Nielsen and Cliver. I mean, there's risk and reward football. We know that's well, success that's brought Ipswich Town. I'm absolutely fine with it, but that was very risky. Morsey to Delap, good chance from Zabani. The loose ball rolls to Taylor. Taylor strong in midfield, finds Chaplin. Chaplin with a good looking ball into the box. Touched on just wide from Smonix. That would have troubled the goalkeeper. Out for a corner kick. Good attack there. Yeah, it's a wonderful attack and clever play by Connor Chaplin not to play the ball immediately wide. He had the presence of mind to just adjust the ball and put it into the danger zone. And and these three that are playing behind uh, Liam Delap are all capable of picking up really good positions infield and actually goal-scoring positions as well. And that's Amari Hutchinson, Smodix and Connor Chapman. Smodix was the one then. I really like this as a three with all due respect to others. Smodix with his corner kick headed away by the flying frame of Housen. Morsey out to the left side. Smodix underneath the Bournemouth supporters, far side, coming in field, gives it to Chaplin, tries to return the ball to him, comes out as far as Taylor, who will certainly like to hit from there, as we saw last season on a couple of occasions on this 
occasion that it was wide. Well, Jack Taylor had two good options there. It wasn't one they outweighed the other. There was a lovely chance to play the ball wide to Leif Davis, who was in acres of space, could have got a lovely ball in. But that was also a good opportunity to have a pop at goal, and he wasn't really very far wide with it. So that was a good position he took up. Four members of the League One club in the Sipswich Town team this afternoon. One of them, Burgess, wins a header on halfway. Brought, it's brought down by Cook. Cook to the left-hand side, Semenu. He's got an excellent first touch. Well picked out by Cook. Semenu gets inside the box, gets to the byline. Into the middle it comes. Johnson's having trouble with Semenu. That's uh, a real threat for Bournemouth and a concern for Ipswich Town. Up goes the ball for a throw-in on this near side. Chaplin takes it quickly. Infield it goes to Taylor, Taylor controls, plays it towards Smodic, sells them short. Late challenge, good advantage played by the referee, here come Bournemouth, the ball clips off the heels of Evan Nielsen, Bournemouth have a man down in the centre, I think it's their right back and Captain Smith's out of the game. Can it touch down, capitalise, immediately Town play the ball out to the left-hand side, Smith needs support from the bench, play continues, the Bournemouth fans aren't happy, Town are entitled to do this, Town are inside the Bournemouth area with Leif Davis, this would be controversial, they've won a corner kick. Bournemouth bench are furious, the referee played on. And there's a yellow card. Not for a Bournemouth player for maybe saying a bit too much. Turn of one a corner in amongst all of that. Well, I do like good sportsmanship, but, you know, the players have got no cause. They can't argue nowadays because you get a lot of feigning of injury. So I'm not sure about this. This looks bad, it looks serious, but on so many occasions... Within about 10 seconds, that same player will get up and he'll be running back to that penalty area if he's allowed to stay on that, that is. But, but um, you know, it's debatable. Do you carry on? We had a good chance of a good attack and that proved the fact that we got a corner from it. So, difficult. Yeah, Town will just play into the rules. Uh, Smith is still down, looks to be in a bit of pain. Wasn't the worst challenge in the world, but it's uh, Smodic's uh, a yellow card. So he and Delap on a caution, and Doni Areola speaking extensively now himself to the uh, fourth official who'd had Kieran McKenna calmly in his ear a few moments ago, out go a few of the uh, Ipswich Town substitutes below us He's like all managers, I don't know who he played for, but I bet he did it in his career Yeah, one way of thought As uh, we're just waiting for this corner kick to be taken, Smith's hobbling across, he's going to be okay to uh, carry on Adam Smith actually started his career at uh, Tottenham I did like him when he first came through many moons ago now and he played on loan for Derby in that crazy 4-4 scoreline you uh, might remember Tam were under Mick McCarthy it was that night that Steve McLaren went into the Derby dressing room at half time having just taken charge and they mounted this um, quite remarkable comeback at Pride Park the wind now is swirling around Portman Road Bournemouth a man light uh, Smodix gets ready to take this corner kick for Ipswich under the big screen over in the far right corner, nil-nil and it comes from Smodix headed away well by Housen as tall as anyone in there now one of the smaller players on the field, Hutchinson has it on the right trying to get away from uh, Kirkes. I'm enjoying watching these two up against each other Hutchinson gets away from Kirkes, gives it to Johnson, well played by the Ipswich Town man Johnson turns down the line to Hutchinson again, let's have another go at Kirkes. John Hutchinson crosses him well, headed by Burgess onto the roof of the net, that was a chance Yeah it was a chance and the corner was a chance, we put seven players in the box they were only able to have nine outfield players because the one was off the pitch. That gave us a chance from the corner kick. And then, as you say, this is an interesting one. Kirk Hess versus Hutchinson. He's probably thinking, I didn't realise Mo Salah played for Ipswich. <laughs> He's doing well. He's having a good game. Murray Hutchinson down this right-hand side where um, a lot of people feel is his best position at the moment. He certainly inked on the Ipswich Town team sheet, game in, game out, wherever he plays all the younger players, Chaplin over the top, Delap's going to go after it, Kepa's not going to quite get there, there's a Barney had to turn it away from his goalkeeper who now applauds the Ukrainian defended well. Yeah, he did do well, the defender did really well because I think the goalkeeper had sort of got a bit confused with that, that's a lovely early ball from Connor Chaplin, he does know that position really well. He's done some good stuff out there, Chaplin, there's a couple of chances created by him in this game, the number 10, in the 20th minute of this Premier League game, Ipswich Town have a throw and Leif Davis to take it from under the Bournemouth fans far side 
still goalless on BBC Radio Suffolk in it loops from the Geordie cleared away not very far only as far as Hutchinson who gets underneath it from the D decent technique just too much leverage yeah good well done Connor Chapman for leaving it alone because Amari Hutchinson was facing the goal he's just got it a little bit wrong he's just cut underneath the ball and didn't quite time it right but uh, Interesting game, there's little pockets of play, sometimes it's Bournemouth, sometimes it's Ipswich and you know it's a bit end-to-end, -end. even Kieran McKenna said in his pre-match conference that this would be a very open game, well he was right. Another couple of two o'clock kickoffs at this level, back to Graham. Leicester nil, Brighton nil, Fulham one, Arsenal nil, Raul Jimenez. Chaplin to Taylor, De Lapp flicks it on to Smodix, this is good play from Ipswich Town, Smodix down the left hand side tries to get the ball into the Bournemouth area. And it goes far side, still nil-nil, but plenty promise in this game from both sides when they attack. That must have been the first time that Leif Davis has arrived late on the scene, you know, he just, you know, we desperately needed him there and he was left toiling. Good atmosphere as ever at Portman Road. Davis with this throw into the Bournemouth area, headed up but not fully away by Bournemouth defender, drops to Burgess, Burgess with a pullback, Chaplin! Got a Chaplin with a goal! Beautiful left foot finish, low into the corner of the net. He's now in his career, scored in League Two, League One, the Championship and the Premier League. He's completed the set, Town lead Bournemouth 1-0. Absolutely spot on, beautifully set up and a wonderful finish from somebody who just knows that position so well. He knows where all the spaces are and there he was. Well yeah, there Burgess. you go, uh, it was Cameron Burgess, I think, who set him up, and, and Connor Chaplin, he knows where a number 10 should go, whether he's having difficulty or whether he's having a good day. He really is a clever player. Terrific from Burgess as well, peace of mind, it shouldn't be underestimated either, with all due respect, the centre-half kept his composure in there, didn't lash it towards the near post, didn't try to drill it into the centre, he knew where Chaplin was, and I think we're seeing in the replay Chaplin signalling back towards him, so a couple of those players that I mentioned that have graduated from League One to the Championship, link to the Premier League, linking up there for the opening goal of this game. It's a town ahead in the rain and wind at, Port, at uh, Portman Road, second header from De Lapp. Housen gets it back to Kepa. It cost Chelsea the best part of £72 million, the Spanish goalkeeper, when he went to Stamford Bridge. Ball over the top by Smith, volleyed away by O'Shea to halfway. On the halfway line, Cook. Special moment that for Connor Chaplin to get that Premier League goal. That's quite some achievement. Sam Morsey did it earlier on in the season when he scored down at Southampton, completed scoring in all four divisions. And uh, Connor Chaplin has now done that uh, as well. I like this game. There's some quality game. and there's some spice as well. So we've got pretty much everything. Liam Delap's having a right good fight with the centre halves, and Sam Morsey is scrapping away with the mid centre midfield players. Good game. Too long from Murich. That was a poor kick from him, but it is, and I thought it would be as well between these two sides. Two very highly regarded uh, managers who've done good things at their respective clubs. Uh, real intent on expansive attacking football from uh, both sets of players. It's Town, though, through Connor Chaplin, who gets that goal. He's second of the season, scored at Wimbledon in the Cup early on. And he's justified his return to the side. Taylor, good scenes of celebration as well. House sliced it out on this near side into the Ipswich Town bench. Yeah, it looks as if the nice early ball forward, either up to Liam to lap or beyond him into sort of the spaces behind the Bournemouth back four, it's working. So, you know, we've got to be positive about that. Taylor brought down to ground by Semenya, free kick directly in front of us for Ipswich Town. Which uh, the goal scorer Chaplin is in conversation with Ben Johnson over. It's going to be the latter who gets the ball rolling back to Morsey. Little triangle involving Taylor. Johnson down the line to Amari Hutchinson. Sure, He's been Amari. good in this game. He turns, wants to take on Kirkes on the outside. Comes off Kirkes out of play. It's brilliant watching these two on this near side. We've got a really good view of the Hutchinson Kirkes battle in this first half. Similar height, the two players. 
Yeah, it's a great contest. Yeah, both uh, very, very talented. Kirk has only 21. Here is Ben Johnson with a throw for Ipswich Town. They have the lead in this game. He gets it towards De Lapp under pressure from House and wins the corner kick for Ipswich there. Fourth of the game. Town still the only Premier League side without a headed goal this season. Well, we've looked a threat on the corner so far. We're sort of, if we can, we're trying to pile seven players in there. Two seem to be going into the six-yard box to make it difficult for the goalkeeper and the other five are starting off in and around the penalty spot. Remember the Tottenham win, the Manchester United draw were both Sundays. Town have looked pretty good. Villa here was a Sunday. Davis with his corner kick, punched away by Kepper. And as far as Chaplin on the far side, wide left. In comes his little ball off Kirkes. Cleared away by Cliver, not very far as far as Taylor who hits. It's deflected, saved by Kepper. Off balance, that was close to 2-0. Well done, Jack Taylor. That's your second attempt at goal, and it's, uh, it's quite right. You know, loose balls near the edge of the box. Just have a go. And, it, and that can happen, it can get a deflection and it can cause the goalkeeper enormous problems. Bournemouth have, all, Bournemouth have got all ten black and red striped shirts in the box off to our right as Sam Smodick stands over this corner kick by the giant screen. Town lead 1-0 and it comes good delivery from him right under the bar and it's in! It's just down of a second goal! No, been disallowed, it was Cameron Burgess who started to celebrate. The referee seemed to point towards the centre spot, but it's not been allowed. It's still just 1-0 Ipswich. Not too many complaints, it has to be said, from those out there in blue. Well, it's very difficult to give you a complete opinion on that one because, as I said, you know, we start off with so many players in the box, you're talking about 17 outfield players. Well, it looks as if he... Yeah, he could have been climbing on the back of the defender, you know. Yeah, I think so. Here are having a look at it. Checking the disallowed goal for a foul. Rather than it coming off a hand or anything like that, I think we're going to stay. Decision no goal, a foul by Delap. More fouls than any other player in the Premier League so far uh, this season. By quite a distance, there's a stat came up. Uh, in the week, Sam Morsey was also on that shortlist, but I think Sam was down number five or something like that. But Liam Delap, number one, there's a, a couple at least so far in this game to add to his tally. Yeah, he's got a hold of the neck of Smith, not sure about that. Play continues, Bournemouth 1 0 down, trying to get on the ball inside it, which towns half. They can't. Housen in the end gives it back to his goalkeeper, Kepper. Delap just stops his run a bit early. Now Zabani goes long for Bournemouth. Out of his area comes Murich, scoops it up in the air, brought down by Cook in midfield, gets it forward early towards Evan Nielsen, he takes it on his chest. Well, work by Moores, he almost given away, oh, a chance for Bournemouth! Hit the post, comes back into play, that was awful defending from Ipswich Town, absolutely horrific. Luckily they got away with it, it was calamitous. Town now on the attack, Davis has carried the ball a long way, Leif Davis still has it to his left-hand side, Smodix. Maybe a chance for Town now to get the second goal of the game. Morsey it is inside the area, he's got a chance, still Morsey finds Chaplin, opportunity for his second, though his shot is charged down off his left boot, headed away by Semenyo. I said this game wasn't going to stay nil-nil for long, it didn't, I don't know if it's going to stay one-nil for that long either. Chances for both sides, end-to-end -end at the moment. Evan Nielsen brought down, there's already a foul on an Ipswich Town player ahead of that, it's an Ipswich Town free kick. Well, there's another player down there, but that, that also, the, the chance to Bournemouth came from a poor clearance from uh, Murich, he shouldn't, so he's got to get more distance on that, but at the other end, we almost had uh, an absolute, you know, another chance for Conor Chaplin again, you know, this, this is real end-to-end -end stuff. Oh, that was a real chance as well. They are complete. Surely that's not on the Burgess goal that wasn't. Maybe on a penalty claim for Bournemouth. Anyway, fourth official dealing with something on the Bournemouth bench. One of them is going to get a yellow card. One of the Bournemouth coaching staff or the manager, Areola, I think it was. Anyway, plenty to talk about there, plenty going on, both on and off the pitch. Clivert's back up on his feet, incidentally. The ball, just the Ipswich Town, uh, just the Bournemouth side of the centre circle for an Ipswich Town free kick. And amongst all of that, Town lead 1 0 Chaplin with a goal on BBC Radio Suffolk. Heavy rain 
at Portman Road. Burgess on this free kick, knocks it into the Bournemouth area, headed square by O'Shea, Smodix centrally, just inside the box, cleared away though by Bournemouth, that ball will run away from Cliver, who shows signs of frustration, still the chat goes on between Andoni Areola and the fourth official, he's going to watch himself, the uh, Bournemouth manager. Cliver has made a terrific run there and he looked around in disgust at the quality of the, or lack of quality of the ball. The ball goes straight into touch. It should have put Cliver clear through. No penalty. It was uh, against Burgess on Cliver a few moments ago. That's what VAR looked at. Looked like a decent decision. Possibly what Ariel is disagreeing over, which you'd expect. Delap near side, done very well. Finds Chapman on the spin. Morsey across the field towards Burgess far side Taylor goes back towards O'Shea now Morsey in the centre circle good from town just finding blue shirts Chaplin to Taylor very very good football Taylor to Smodic Smodic's edge of the area tries to pick his spot straight at Kepa lovely football from Ipswich Town yeah beautiful play I love what started it that was Liam Delap absolutely knocking the centre-half flying, kept possession of the ball and Dara O'Shea's pass to Morsi was absolutely perfect. Chaplin's playing really well for Ipswich Town as well. Here's Kirkes who flashed that one across the face of the goal early on at 0-0. Kirkes coming forward, brought down by Amari Hutchinson. Free kick to Bournemouth inside the town half. Rolls reversed there, it was Kirkes attacking and Hutchinson having to do some defending. Hutchinson's come off the worst, a little bit Limp on this near side from him. Here is uh, Lewis Cook, former Leeds player. One England cap in his time. Said his injuries, but a very good player. Housen up towards Evan Eelson. That's food and drink all afternoon for Burgess. Bournemouth aren't going to get any joy floating that kind of height of ball up towards Evan Eelson against Burgess and O'Shea. Got to be cuter. Bournemouth can't get forward. Batted away by O'Shea on the other side. De lap against Zabani. Here we go again, nice control from Delap wants to take on Zabani. Zabani's going to get the better of this challenge. Oh, oh, oh. Down goes Zabani, free kick to Bournemouth. Great right stack, great right stuff. As soon as that ball was going up, I thought, come on, Liam. You know, he wasn't favourite to start with the get-it, but he made himself favourite, and he's going to really test these guys out. He really is. Just got to watch himself on that yellow card. De Lapp, it's a big part of his game, such a good player. Christie out to the left-hand side, that looks an excellent ball, terrific from the Scottish international. Semenya wide left, now running into the Ipswich Town area. Semenya's still got it, gets the byline into the middle, it comes. Blocked off at the near stick, possibly by the legs of Murich. It's a corner to Bournemouth. That's a pass, that crossfield ball from the right to the left, you know, really worries me about Town. Um, I think Harry Clark struggles with it, and certainly Ben Johnson struggles with it. It's the right to left ball, and it gets the left attacker into the game. 33 minutes played. This wet and windy Sunday afternoon at Portman Road. Town have the lead on BBC Radio Suffolk. Corner kick for Bournemouth, hanging to the far stick. Glancing header away from O'Shea. Hutchinson at left back will go after it. Town have got a man down inside their six yard area. It's Delap. He's up on his feet again. Play continues. Hutchinson's on the far side for a change. Infield to Chaplin, the only goal scorer so far. He'll go back to O'Shea. O'Shea then whips it to the far side and Davis, Davis comes in field, takes on Tavernier, beats him, great run this from Davis, but then he loses the ball to Zabani, Tavernier to the right-hand side, Zabani in the space vacated by Davis, tries to get an early ball in, it's come off Smodix, excellent defending back from Smodix, now Davis has the ball once again for Ipswich Town, this time he looks to pass it forward, he's done very well, he's found Delap. it's a really good game to watch between these two sides, <laughs> Delap takes a tumble, play continues, just lost his footing, he's looking at the referee, the referee says nothing doing there, it's Christie who brings it away, there Cook on the centre spot, threads the ball up to Clivert, wide on the left hand side, Semenyo outside the Ipswich area, Bournemouth on the attack, he hits it in low, blocked away by O'Shea stretching out his right leg, as far as Kirk has with the gloves on, Infield to Lewis Cook, back to Housen on the halfway line. Housen to the left, picks out Semenyu, he controls it on the outside of his right boot, Semenyu. Infield towards Clivet, Clivet shoots it straight at Norwich, thankfully, it was on target though. Yeah, it's uh, interesting when you're looking at individuals and, and also partnerships when you see sort of teams play in this partnership down the Bournemouth left-hand side is, is potentially as good as you can get, Kirkes and Semeno. Fortunately, Hutchinson is 
causing problems to Kirkus and he's unable to really get forward as much as he would like. He has made one excellent forward run early in the game, but this guy down the left-hand side, the left attacker, Semeno, useful. Yeah, he's very good. Here he is against Johnson, just missed the ball there. Smodic centrally to Taylor in the centre circle. Taylor will be happy with his first ever Premier League start. Here he is again. Come a long way from his Barnet days, having been released by Chelsea as a kid, Jack Taylor. Morsey mm. takes a chance and loses it. Mistake from Morsey. Clive at one and one with Burgess. Clive inside the area. Great challenge from Burgess. Fantastic defending. Goodness me, he deserves to be on his captain's Christmas list after that one. Well done, Cameron Burgess. He's done what every defender should do. Although you you toil in, you think you're not going to catch the guy. But what they all do, they just slow up as they're about to shoot, and that gives you that little chance to get your toe in. And that's what Cameron's doing. He, he stays, oh. he stays, he stays, and then just about gets there. Well done. Brilliant. Good defending. Brilliant defending from Burgess, because it was a mistake from Morsey. Corner kick to Bournemouth, looking to level. Headed away well again by Burgess. He's had a good reintroduction to the side. This afternoon, unfortunately, not to score a goal, but defending well. Great interception from Morsey. Morsey gets up to the halfway line, now going beyond it. Infield, he goes towards Chaplin. He's the red, looked like a handball by Chaplin. It was free kick to Bournemouth again. The fourth, the fourth official's having to deal with lots of questions and comments from one minute swinging from the home dugout. Then it's the away, now it's the home dugout. It's Rennie Gilmars and the Ipswich Town goalkeeping coach. Sam, did, Sam Morsi did really well and he should have passed right to uh, Smodix, not go in field, you know, bad decision it really was. 36 and a half minutes played, McMillan's alongside me at Portman Road as he will be at Molyneux on Saturday, then for the visit of Newcastle United. In poor form at the moment, the Geordies, they come here a week on Saturday, final pre-Christmas game. Semenyu on a run wide left, he's such a good player, wants to take on all comers, eventually lost the ball. Town clear as far as Lewis Cook, Cook to the right-hand side, Bournemouth trying to draw level before half-time. Here is Tavernier, formerly of Middlesbrough, to Christie, once of Celtic. Cook helps it on its way back to Housen. Town of plenty of bodies, keeping a good shape behind the ball. Bournemouth unable to penetrate, and therefore falls back to pretty much the centre spot with Zabani. There's a club, or well, a player coveted by lots of clubs, Zabani, when he uh, decided to join Bournemouth. Housen to the left hand side, Clivert. Strength from that central role. Infield to Cook, tucks it back to Housen. Back to goal, Tavernier, 30 yards from goal. Great ball, finds Clivert inside the box. Clivert into the middle, oh, headed by, by Burgess. Otherwise, Evan Nielsen was going to nod it in again. Terrific work from the Australian international. What a game Cameron Burgess is having in real crucial areas. I mean, he's heading balls out, he's, he's making last-ditch tackles. He's been absolutely outstanding. Hasn't he been wonderful? Never lets it sit down down. League One, Championship, Premier League. Just cracks on and defends very, very well time and time again. Another one of those um, phenomenal signings made by Paul Cook in the Demolition Man summer. Corner kick to Bournemouth. Seven minutes to go until half time. Connor Chaplin's goal separates these two sides. All ten blue shirts back off to our left. In its swings, headed away by De Lapp. Up will go Cook inside the Ipswich area. Good leap on him. Not the tallest player out there, but he timed his spring ever so well. Cleared by Ipswich high, well into the Bournemouth half of the field. In the end, all the way back to the goalkeeper who won the Champions League and the Europa League with um, Chelsea. And then very successful with Real Madrid last season in La Liga. Doesn't look at this stage anyway to have much of a future at Stamford Bridge. Chelsea, of course, here in a few weeks' time. Town's final game of this incredible calendar year. It was against Moresca's side on the 30th of December. Evan Nielsen, the number nine, to the right-hand side. Smith back to Evan Nielsen on that far side, the Bournemouth right. Now back with uh, Zabani, one of those in gloves. Another is Housen. Cook towards Kirkes. Town keeping a good shape at the moment. Bournemouth, plenty of the ball. Live on BBC Radio, Suffolk, good play from Cook to find Kirkes. Kirkes with an attempted first-time ball in, blocked off by Morsey. 
It's the fourth corner kick of the afternoon to the visitors. Yeah, I was watching Kirkus's movement all the time there. He was searching and searching and searching for a good position, and then all of a sudden he spots one, and away he goes, and he gets the opportunity to get a ball in the box, wins a corner. Has been linked with Liverpool, Kirk, as you can see why, based on this performance. Cook with a corner kick for Bournemouth, flick on header over the top, and it was Evan Nielsen. Yeah, good match this is, really is. You know, they've uh, they've done well, Bournemouth, they've had their moments, uh, but we have, I, I fancied as soon as we started the game and, and we were able to keep possession under extreme pressure from Bournemouth and, and we, it, we just sort of squirmed out of situations kept possession and it seemed we did that three or four times and it seriously got us going so you know we've worked hard for this Murich off the edge of his uh, six yard area off to our right hand side uh, left hand side should I say side lead 1-0 left footed didn't seem to be too held up by the wind. He cleared it into the Bournemouth half of the field. Smoddocks couldn't do anything with it. Christie gets on the ball in the centre of the field. Immediately looks towards the left. Johnson slides in there while Semenya waited for the ball. Out it goes for a throw-in to uh, Bournemouth. It's a midweek game when Town go down to uh, Bournemouth later on this season. April Fool's Day, in fact, at the uh, Vitality Stadium. I've actually got a run, a good run in all competitions. I'm beating the last seven meetings uh, against Bournemouth. A few of those, of course, have been in the uh, League Cup and FA Cup down the years. They're leading this one. Hutchinson loses the ball, got caught out. Semenyu coming forward. Morsey slides in, not well enough. Semenyu pulls a shot wide from 19 yards. Another chance, though, for uh, Bournemouth, given to them really by Ipswich. He was unlucky there, Amari Hutchinson. I'm watching him closely and I'm thinking, get your first touch right. And he he got it right and then he he just lost possession. And uh, that was enough for them to sort of make uh, inroads on our sort of penalty area. But uh, it's a good game all round. Players playing well, partnerships are good. A share up to halfway. Kirkes gets there ahead of Hutchinson, turns into a pass. Worked out well for Bournemouth. Bournemouth down the left-hand side with Clivert. Three minutes plus added on time to get a first-half equaliser. Clivert crossed into the town area, brought down by Tavernier. Tavernier gets another bite at it, thought about going down. He didn't, to his credit. Would have been a big decision to be made there by the referee. As it is, it's out far side for a throw-in. Yeah, it was good backup defending there. There was a sort of a, a little bit of an opportunity for Bournemouth. They they lacked numbers in the box on that occasion, but uh, we dealt with it well. In the end, I think they're a bit fortunate to get a corner. It's five corner kicks per team in this first half, which has less than three minutes to run. Town lead one nil. Everybody back for Ipswich defending this latest corner kick to the visitors. Referee just sorting one or two things out in the box off to our left-hand side. It's Marcus Tavernier over this set piece. Pulls it back this time to Lewis Cook. Back to Tavernier inside the area. There is the pullback. Good diving challenge from Delap. Timely on Clivert. They uh, end up tumbling into one another. And it continues after a hug from Clivert on Delap and a broad smile. Now Clivert's lost his footing. Quickly taken throw in the end for Bournemouth, who have it wide right. In comes the cross from Clivert. Lunging towards the ball to head it away as O'Shea. Delap touches it back to Morsey. Morsey does exactly the right thing in that area of the field, just boots it downfield. Delap's going to try and get the ball. Looked like a handball from Cook, entry given by the referee. Fairly easy decision to make. We could see that from up here. Yeah, but he's handballed it purely and simply because Liam to that never says that's not my ball he goes for everything and he makes something out of absolutely nothing just inside the uh, Bournemouth half of the field for uh, Ipswich Town and yes again uh, on a Sunday in fact they're on a run of just the one three o'clock Saturday game here in 12 weeks at uh, Ipswich Town so old school three o'clock Saturday games aren't they more about uh, Sunday afternoons this season, not so it seems to be at the moment. Burgess up towards Delap, Delap heads it to Smodix who shoots on target, but straight at Kepa. Comfortable take for the uh, Spaniard. Final minute of the first 45, quick kick from Kepa. O'Shea should get the better of Evan Nielsen in the air, and he does. Collected by Christian midfield, runs away from him. Taylor takes it on, can't get it beyond Smith. 
Davis though to the middle he gives it to Cook both sides giving the ball away one after another for a series of four or five passes good run from Tavernier Tavernier across the field to Semenya Semenya's first touch again close to perfection but Johnson then cleared it away from him Delap goes down nothing doing again well refereed there is Housen on the ball clock ticking for Bournemouth to score in this first half Tavernier back to Zabani square to House at town 1 0 up. Chaplin with a really good goal after 22 minutes of this match. One of five changes pre kickoff. Connor Chaplin. There is House and now to Cook. Cook threading it through to Semenya. Semenya wide left. Three minutes of added on time to be played at the end of this first half. Semenya thinks he's got the better of uh, Ben Johnson. Back it goes to. Cook, Hutchinson barges into the back of Cook, the referee says, play on, housen has got the ball for Bournemouth to the left-hand side, he finds Clive at the number 19, infield it goes to Christie, Christie out to the right-hand side with his second touch, arrows it to Smith, infield to Tavernier, Town back defending, Tavernier still has the ball, finds Kirkes, 20-odd yards from goal, no route through for Bournemouth at the moment. Town just packed in defence. Kirkes with a very deep cross beyond the far post. Headed on by Smodix out for a through to the visitors. Taken quickly by Bournemouth. Keen to make the most of these added on three minutes. Behind in this game. Zabani put one in behind for Evan Nielsen. And Muric is there. Quickly out of his six-yard area to claim that one. Evan Nielsen had every entitlement to go for the ball. But uh, it might have given away a free kick to Aaron Muric. He's apologetic for the uh, Brazilian. Doesn't want to get on the wrong side of Aaron Muric. Yeah, vital couple of minutes this for town. We want to go in that dressing room now in front. And they're pushing and pushing Bournemouth. And great decision there by both defender and goalkeeper. That was a dangerous ball. They're at the midway stage of this added on period of three minutes. Under the lights at... Uh, Portman Road here this afternoon. Headed in field by uh, Delap, nodded away by House and brought down by Semenyu, blocked off by two or three players. Bournemouth still get the ball away incredibly. Knocked forward by Cliver to Tavernier. Tavernier looking into the middle to Evan Nielsen, trying to give him a run in on goal from the edge of the 18 yard area. Couldn't get the ball through to him though, and thankfully, Town get bodies back effectively. Davis down the line to Smodic. Smodic just about keeps his footing, can't keep a hold of the ball, but he's one of throwing. And well, that was terrific backup time. defending by Leif Davis. Cameron Burgess, as, an, as a lone defender, would have been in trouble, but Leif Davis just went and went, you know, as quickly as he possibly could to get in and around Cameron Burgess. And in the end, the numbers did the job more than the individual. Through and far side for Ipswich Town, one by Delap. Then he belts it high, and possibly high for Smodix to get on to. Bournemouth ever thrown way inside their half. Town looking a very good bet to take a 1 0 lead down the tunnel at the end of this first half. Just 20 seconds of the first period to go. In really bad conditions, has to be said, at Portman Road. Town lead 1 0. Live on BBC Radio Suffolk, Zabani. Final throw of the dice for Bourne within this first half. He goes long, Burgess wins a header. Hutchinson has to come back and win it. He takes a tumble, wins a free kick. That'll do. It's gone down winded. That's it for the first half. Ipswich Town will head down the tunnel with smiles on their faces, leading Bournemouth by a Connor Chaplin goal to nil. Yeah, what a game. Excellent game. This will keep everybody warm. It really will because it's end-to-end -end stuff. It's, a, it's enjoyable stuff. Bournemouth have been good. But we've been a fraction better than Bournemouth and we deserve our lead. So, you know, this is this, our dressing room. It'll be a good dressing room. Can take stock casually, calmly, and then send the players out, you know, with a good last few words. That's what Kira McKenna will be working on. And um, we've had some good performances. We really have. I think the team have played well as a whole. But, you know, just generally, you always have one or two that have been perhaps slightly better. Liam Delap is one of them, Connor Chaplin is another, uh, Cameron Burgess is, is the third one. Uh, I think Morsi's been, you know, he's been in the thick of the action. But those three, 
have just been a cut above the norm and they've made it all happen for us Cameron Burgess not only defensively he set the goal up brilliantly so you know we've had these individual performances that have been top-notch really have nice to see Connor Chaplin back in the side we always wondered whether he could cope with the pace of this level well he's doing it all right and he's doing it because he knows the position so well he doesn't have to think twice he just knows where to go and it gives him that bit of an advantage his legs might not take him quickly enough but his mind does you know he sees it quickly and he reacts quickly uh, terrific Liam Delap I love watching the guy you know and he, he's not all about finesse that, by any means he's he just absolutely says to the two centre halves you're gonna have to work extremely hard to keep me quiet and he does it from the first minute uh, right the way through and uh, he's, uh, he's got a yellow card but it doesn't bother him he gets on with it and he makes balls that are not his balls into you know his possession uh, I've enjoyed this Daro shades just very quietly as well he's picked out one or two excellent little passes you know so good performance all round we're beating a, a very good team um, you know if we can repeat this in the second half that would be job done and a good job done as well Ipswich Town leading Bournemouth then by a Con Connor Chaplin goal to nil We'll be back with Brenna William at Mills for that second half on BBC Radio Suffolk. Your thoughts on the first half? Uh, most welcome elsewhere in the Premier League. Two other two o'clock kickoffs, uh, both at the half time stage at Craven Cottage. Fulham leading Arsenal by Raul Jimenez, goal to nil. And Tariq Lamptey's been on target for Brighton away at Leicester. It's Leicester nil, Brighton one at half time. We'll look back at yesterday in the Premier League in just a moment. BBC Radio Suffolk. In our match day preview programme on Fridays, we look ahead to the next Ipswich Town fixture. I know Liam's full focus is here and on the team. It's about keeping your feet on the floor, not listening too much to outside noise, listen to the people close to you whose opinion you really, really, really value. We talk non-league football. Oh, honestly, don't know where to start, really. It's a real mixed bag of emotions, that. Why just did we make hard work of it? And we bring you the best sports stories from around the county. I've still got more that I can do. Yeah, I feel motivated. I feel good, actually. Join me, Graham Mack, for the Match Day Preview Pro program every Friday from 6 BBC Radio Suffolk the Blue Hour with Brenna Woolley from 6 tomorrow on both BBC Radio Suffolk and BBC Sound. So hopefully he'll be talking about three points for Ipswich Town in this afternoon's main feature. The lead Bournemouth 1-0 at half-time through that Connor Chaplin goal. Uh, elsewhere, Fulham 1, Arsenal 0 at half-time. Brighton 1-up away at Leicester. The 4.30 kick-off in the Premier League today sees second place Chelsea at Tottenham in a London derby. Spurs boss Ange Postacoglu is under pressure to get a result this afternoon after a string of inconsistent performances this season after losing at Bournemouth on Thursday he says his side need to establish more control on the pitch. For me the disappointment last night was there was a repeat of sort of cycle of, of us going into games and starting well enough but then allowing the opposition to, to get a grip on it by either yeah, conceding a sloppy goal like we did last night or not taking our opportunities and we need to break, break that cycle. Chelsea can narrow the gap to Liverpool to just four points with a win at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Enzo Maresca's side second in the table, unbeaten in their last six games. Despite their positive start to the campaign, though still insisting it's too early for Chelsea to be thinking about lifting the Premier League trophy. We are very happy for the fans, uh, absolutely, because they deserve to, to, to live this, this moment. They can dream, they can... We are very happy. Uh, and I said, uh, we work every day to... Uh, also to make them happy and proud of the players and then for the rest nothing to add I said many times I don't think we are uh, we are there uh, and we are ready to compete with uh, uh, Arsenal Liverpool and City we are just focused on Sunday game and then the next one we are not thinking about uh, April May June these kind of things because it's too early and in football everything can change very quick 
Let's look back briefly at yesterday in the Premier League. Then we'll start with that defeat for Manchester United, beaten 3-2 at home by Nottingham Forest last night. Forest's first win at Old Trafford since 1994. Striker Chris Wood among the goal scorers again for Nuno Espirito Santo. That was his 10th goal in the top flight so far this season. Here's uh, Nuno's thoughts on the evergreen 33-year-old. So happy to have him. And um, I already said that inside, I think Chris... I don't have too many words already to say. We are thankful and glad that we have him. And he's an amazing example for the young lads to follow. Because he's never too late. He's never too late. And Chris deserves everything that he's getting. Everything. The result means it's back-to-back defeats for Manchester United for the first time under new manager Ruben Amorim. It's the journey. As you can say, you have difficult moments and then you, in the context you suffer goals that they are difficult for the team in the beginning of the first half, in the beginning of the second half, and then it's really hard. But we have to continue with the same confidence, knowing this is a long journey and we have to, to really focus on the details. Champions Manchester City have dropped 14 points out of a possible 18 from their last six top flight games. City could only manage a two-all draw at Crystal Palace yesterday. Uh, Palace boss Oliver Glasner felt his side did enough to warrant three from the game. We are pleased with the point, but it still feels a little bit like if we had performed on our best level that we could have won the game. So this is still a feeling I have in my... I don't know, in my stomach or somewhere. But overall, the players uh, yeah, defended uh, quite well. We, we scored nice goals. We had uh, three, four, five other uh, mm. very good opportunities. City had to come from behind twice in that one to rescue a point. Manager Pep Guardiola and midfielder Bernardo Silva spoke post-match. We cannot talk about the Tata Reds when we lost four games in a row. Now we draw. So we step by step and try to, to win the next game and recover people and we see the last month. So that is a reality. Well, we're in December. Of course, we would like to be in a, in, the, in a different position. I would say that if we recover our players quickly, we can always do it. But uh, right now, our concern is, is a different one. We have to look at winning the next game and doing better because uh, the, last, the last month and a half was just not good enough. Newcastle were beaten 4-2 away at Brentford yesterday. Eddie Howe's side have now gone four matches without a win and are currently 12th in the table. Defensively, we weren't strong enough. Um, conceded four really poor goals. It wasn't even individual mistakes connected with the goals. It was collective mistakes. Um, really disappointed with the third one because in that moment we're in the game. We would fought back really well twice. Um, that's just a long direct free kick. We don't handle. We don't handle the second ball and that goal really did um, sort of sum up our afternoon. And that win for uh, Brentford over Newcastle, uh, seventh at home for the Bees this season. No team has more points at their own ground this season, uh, 22 for the record, than Thomas Franks. It's right now, I think it's, it's important to, of course, I, I, I think it made, it made this rule of 24 hours where we can celebrate. And today I definitely want to celebrate uh, a win and a performance like this. And then it was 24 hours in almost misery after we lost to Villa because I think we missed out on a chance against a very good team but we need to be positive and keep the momentum and then we know there's a lot of things we want to work on but but right now what 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 a what a, what a moment we are in Brentford Football Club and 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 the fans that they should be unbelievable delighted one other fixture in the top flight yesterday ended Aston Villa 1 Southampton 0 having gone there 8 without a win in all competitions recently that's now back to back wins for Unai Emery's Villa side uh, Russell Martin Saints now 8 points from safety the guys are trying they're giving absolutely everything that's all we can ask for. Um, just that lack of conviction, really, and, and real like quality of decision making in the final third is just not quite there. When you're on the back of uh, loads of difficult results and difficult decisions, and there's um, that disappointment, I think it affects your decision making for sure. So yeah, I think it's probably a bit of that, and we need to find a way to give that to them. We've had a lot of changes with the goalkeeper as well, Rambo being out, Jan Benenrek, so it's it's hurt us a little bit. But it's such a poor goal and. Um, the goals we can see are just not good enough, really. But at some point, if we can see the good one with a really t- good team move or a bit of individual quality, we can say, OK, fine. But the goals we can see are just, just not good enough. Russell Martin speaking after uh, Aston Villa won at Southampton nil yesterday. Uh, so just to recap on today in the Premier League so far, a first half highlights on the way with Ipswich Town leading AFC Bournemouth 1-0 in our main feature. Arsenal trailing at Fulham, at Leicester nil, Brighton 1. In the Scottish Premiership, Rangers 3-0 winners at Ross County earlier today. Uh, West Brom v Sheffield United in the Championship's about to get underway. A few in the uh, WSL are complete. Manchester United 
United's women uh, comfortably seeing off Liverpool 4 0. Manchester City 4 0 winners at home to Leicester City and Tottenham Hotspur beating Everton 2 1. At uh, half time, uh, WSL leaders Chelsea 2 1 up at home to Brighton and Arsenal leading Aston Villa 2 0. About half an hour gone in the match between West Ham's women and Crystal Palace, with uh, Palace leading that one by two goals to one. Reminder, uh, Mick Mills taking your calls at full time in our main feature today, 0800 141 2121 to speak to him. Hopefully it will be reflecting on a first uh, Premier League home victory of the season for Ipswich Town. Semenya running with the ball into the box to Kirkes. Kirkes into the middle, it went right across the face of goal. What a chance for Bournemouth that was. It didn't look too far away from hitting that far post from Kirkes. Taylor strong in midfield, finds Chaplin. Chaplin with a good looking ball into the box. Touched on just wide from Smodix. That would have troubled the goalkeeper. Out for a corner kick, good attack there. Hutchinson crosses him well, headed by Burgess onto the roof of the net. That was a chance. Davis with this thrown to the Bournemouth area, headed up but not fully away by Bournemouth. Defender drops to Burgess, Burgess with a pullback. Chaplin! Connor Chaplin with a goal! His first ever Premier League goal! And a beautiful left foot finish, low into the corner of the net. He's now in his career, scored in League Two, League One, the Championship and the Premier League. He's completed the set. Town lead Bournemouth 1-0. Town lead 1-0 and it comes good delivery from him right under the bar. And it's in. It just out of a second goal. No, been disallowed. It was Cameron Burgess who started to celebrate. The referee seemed to point towards the centre spot, but it's not been allowed. Still just 1-0 Ipswich. Not too many complaints, it has to be said, from those out there in blue. Morsey takes a chance and loses it. Mistake from Morsey. Clive at 1-1 with Burgess. Clive at inside the area. Great challenge from Burgess. Fantastic defending. Goodness me, he deserves to be on his captain's Christmas list after that one. BBC Radio Suffolk. Hey, I'm Rob from BBC Upload, a creative space to be seen and heard on the BBC. And it doesn't matter where your creativity happens. From comedy routines and whodunit novels to musical theatre, it's your amazing creativity which makes the programme. Otherwise, I'd probably spend two hours reading the dictionary, including some of the naughty words. If you've been creative, share it. Go to bbc.co.uk slash upload. BBC Upload. With Rob Jelly. Listen on BBC Sounds. BBC Radio Suffolk. We are uh, on air till five with Match Day. Reminder of the numbers to get in touch with us at full time. 0800 141 2121 to speak to me and uh, Mick Mills. 81333 to text in. 08000 321 on WhatsApp. Start your messages with SFK. Reminder that most of yesterday's non-league action locally was called off due to bad weather. A few games did go ahead in the Isthmian North Division. Felix Stone, Walton United were uh, 1-0 winners away at Haringey Borough, while Ipswich Wanderers drew 1-1 with Galston. Walsh the Willows through to round four of this season's FA Vars after a 2-1 win at home to uh, Brantham Athletic yesterday. Barry St Edmunds rugby players, latest National League fixture ended in defeat to Barnes in London yesterday. 31 points to five the score in favour of the home team. Sudbury meanwhile were winners by 31 points to ten away at Bedford in London and South East Division 1. And in hockey both Barry St Edmunds ladies and Ipswich ladies returned to uh, winning ways in the East Premier Division. Ipswich women's basketball players currently in action against Bristol at Copleston. We'll have a result for you later in the programme. A win for Ipswich today. will see them go back on top of Division 1 of the WNBL. Right, we can go back to uh, Portman Road ahead of the second half. Uh, Ipswich Town leading AFC Bournemouth 1-0. Here's Brenna Woolley. Bournemouth out just ahead of Ipswich Town who right on cue and now led out of the tunnel in their blue shirts by Sam Morsey, the captain. Aaron Murich is the home goalkeeper. A back four of Johnson, O'Shea, Burgess and Davis. Then Morsey alongside Taylor and it's Hutchinson Chaplin the goal scorer Smodix on a yellow and Liam Delap has also been cautioned uh, through the middle the striker on the bench Walton Harry and Jack Clark Burns Alhamidi Broadhead Townsend Phillips and Cayuste Bournemouth in their red and black striped shirts 
uh, occupying the half off to our left in this second half. So town will be kicking towards their preferred direction, towards the north stand. Uh, Kepper as the visiting goalkeeper, number 13 on his back. His back four, Smith the captain, Zabani, House and Kirkes, Cook alongside Christian midfield. And down the right-hand side, Tavernier, Semenyo down the left, Cliverton the number 10, but he has been floating all over. And their central striker is uh, Evan Nielsen, just doing a double check to make sure that it's the same 22 that started this game. And it is on the bench, Travers and Dennis, the two goalkeepers for Bournemouth, Brooks Hill, Unal, Aarons, Kinsey, Belling and uh, Watara. In terms of players that come on might change things, Brooks is an attacking midfielder, Unal is a striker and Watara is a lively uh, wide left-sided player. Planned away in the second half under the lights at Portman Road. Our exit sound 45 minutes away from their first home win in the Premier League for 22 years. Work to be done, a lot of work to be done. They're up against a good side. Bournemouth will be trying to draw level as quickly as possible. Semenyu, he's a good player, ball into the box. Can't be controlled by Clivert. Very lightweight in the challenge there. And the ball is cleared away by Ipswich Town. The far side kept in by Housen. He rolls it forward to Cook. On that far side, Kirkes tries to link up with Semenyo. So um, a warm embrace between Leif Davis and Lewis Cook uh, as the uh, players arrived at the ground a couple of hours ago, uh, almost now, know each other, not just from Davis's loan spell at Bournemouth, but also teammates at Leeds United before that. Kirkes. We're a bit further away from that intriguing battle between him and Hutchinson in this second half. That's happening on the far side of the field. Lovely step over from Cliver. Got the better of Johnson. Pull back into the area, thankfully, to Taylor rather than Tavernier, who'd come into a central area. Johnson having a lot of trouble against Semenyu. It's had a good game, the Ghanaian. Kirkes to the far side. Clivert rolls it back, bright start from Bournemouth in this second half, but that's a wayward ball, not close enough to Semenyu. Town get a breather, go kick. Yeah, it has been a bright start, and Semeno is again the pick of the bunch, and uh, it just seems that uh, at this Premiership level there's some really good wide attacking players right the way through the division. It's a run of three games at town, have to garner points from really this Wolves away, Newcastle at home. The next two opponents aren't in good form, Wolves and Newcastle. Then after that, if you look at the live table at the moment, after this little run of three, Town then play the top six, one after another, because, of course, Fulham and Brighton have a very good season. Town also, December into January, have Liverpool, Chelsea, Arsenal and Manchester City. It's a terrifying start to 2025. That's why these games are hugely important now. On the far side, Kirkes has the ball for Bournemouth. They've started this half well. Only two and a half minutes on the clock. Now we'd love to see a second goal for Ipswich Town. Here is uh, Zabani, who's impressive in the first half. They've got a lot of ability, these two centre-halves. Here is Housen once again. Far side is Cook momentarily in the left-back area. There is... Cook once again, the number four, almost stumbled on the ball. Can't go back to his goalkeeper, Delap was cutting that out. Cook spun away far side down the line to Semenya, trying to flick it on towards Clivert. Morsey gets in the way, runs it in field and gives it back to Burgess. It's lovely seeing that goal celebration back at half-time. Connor Chapman was desperate to get to Cameron Burgess and amongst it all. A risky ball from Murich, didn't work out and eventually when Burgess came over, a lot of words from Chapman and a little kiss as well to say thank you for the setup. Here is... The player for Bournemouth down the right channel inside the Ipswich area. It's Tavernier trying to get it square. It's come off an Ipswich Town defender for a first corner kick of yeah. the half, which Brighton have been the brighter side. Sorry, Bournemouth have been the brighter side in this three and a half minutes. Yeah, you knew that Murich had got that all wrong because he actually delivered the ball with the outside of his right foot, so he got his feet completely wrong. Yes, yeah, distribution has not been as good as I expected when Ipswich Town signed him uh, in the summer. The Kosovan goalkeeper. Cook pulls the corner kick back to Tavernier. Tavernier back to Cook. Cook knocks it in off the back of Morsey. You have an attempt from Semenya. It's a really high boot, which has caught uh, Cameron Burgess in the face. They're on all fours. Not making an awful lot of it. Well, the other well, lovely thing about that goal celebration, he was so sort of slow on the scene, Burgess. So typical, understated and modest of him. He didn't want to make that uh, assist all about him. And it was lovely composure from him when I watched that back. To, to lay the ball on for Chapman was 
terrific, but he was uh, so laid back in terms of joining in the celebration. Oh, Semenyu robs the ball, gets into the Ipswich Town area, then overruns it. Uh, it's out behind for a goal kick to Murray, but Town haven't got going yet. Yeah, just be careful. We've had a little bit of indifference from Murich, and then we have a bit of indifference over on the far side there. We've just got to settle down. We've got to get back into the groove as quickly as possible, really. Bournemouth without a win in six visits here. And in fact, they've only got one win here in their last 15 visits, dating all the way back to 1949. Of course, there was a long period when these two sides didn't meet as Whoa. Town player around at the back. O'Shea's taking a chance. Davis with a header down. Town being a little bit crazy at the back. They've got away with it on this occasion. Smodix pops out his cheeks, comes back and works hard. Infield, that's a risky ball. Morsey takes it. Housen's all over him, pressing. Morsey finds Taylor. Bournemouth with a real spring in their step. Smodix up to Delap. Lovely touch from Delap. Now what can he do? He's bombing forward. He's quick and he's strong. Delap to the edge there. Just runs it too far in front of him, and that allows Zabani to get back, go to ground, and win the ball. That was good play from Delap. Yes, again, typical work from Liam Delap. Yeah, it was a beautiful turn, you know, and he started his surge. You know, he just didn't quite have the legs to go all the way, you know, because it was pretty much from the halfway line. That's got to be a very, very strong run with the ball. He's going to enjoy him while he's here, Liam Delap. Feature on him on that yesterday's football focus on BBC One. Kirkes, far side. Hutchinson is with him. Kirkes holds on to the ball. Hutchinson can't get it away from it. Back it goes. Six minutes gone in the second half on BBC Radio Suffolk Sport. Town still ahead, but Bournemouth have started this second half in ominous form. Christie to Semenyu, a real danger for Bournemouth. Running forward with the balls he loves to do. Overlapping left-hand side. Pull back from Clivet. Maybe a chance now for Cook. He's put it wide. He should have done an awful lot better. Rarely scores. And you can see why with a finish like that. Yeah, that was a that was an opportunity. I just wondered whether that was offside on the far side. I'm not sure, but uh, the run is a really good run. The delivery is, uh, yeah, Cameron Burgess playing them well on side, and this is a chance. It really was. Got to do so much better than that, uh, Lewis Cook. A let off for uh, Ipswich Town. We need some possession. Absolutely do. Uh, seven gone afterwards, as ever. Your thoughts very welcome on BBC Radio Summit. Call 0800 141 2121, the phone number. Text 81333. Start those messages, SFK. Or you can WhatsApp. Also start those with uh, SFK uh, to 08000 321 333. And if you want to get in touch with me ahead of tomorrow night's Blue Hour between 6 and 7, you can email me, Brenner at bbc.co.uk. B R E N N E R at bbc.co.uk. Taylor, straight down the middle, all the way through to uh, Kepper. Kepper keeps a hold of the ball and gives it out to Housen. Housen to the right. A little touch back by Smith to uh, Zabani. Zabani towards the halfway line, Evan Nielsen. He tries to chest it down. Great play from Burgess up towards Chaplin. Chaplin gives it to Delap just outside the area. Delap goes down, nothing doing, says the referee. Passed out of play near side by Bournemouth rather needlessly. I think Housen felt that was going to be a a free kick to Ipswich, could have done better. Through to Leif Davis. Referee just wants to uh, sort out something with uh, Cameron Burgess, who took a knock, he's uh, stumbling, but told the referee is going to be uh, OK. No Greaves on the Ipswich Town bench uh, today, and of course no Twanzebe. Burgess thankfully is going to be all right. Kieran McKenna doesn't look too concerned. Cleared high by Christie after it, keeping up in touch on his thigh. We'll also here from Kieran McKenna this afternoon before off air at five o'clock as the ball again goes up into the clouds from Taylor. A little composure oh, uh, from Mipswich Town so far in the play. Smodix, deftest of touches to the left hand side, was a good one. Davis gets away from Tavernier inside the Bournemouth box, tries to go square, blocked off by Tavernier. Corner kick to Ipswich, that's better. That's a beautiful little touch there that put uh, Leif Davis away, and he's very strong on those runs. He was surging all the way, got into the opposition penalty area, uh, but couldn't quite get his cross in. Just one win and born with last five uh, away games. They have, though, beaten Arsenal and Manchester City at the uh, Vitality Stadium. It's a clearly uh, home record to be proud of this season. They're behind this afternoon, though. 
Ipswich with a corner kick, their first of the second half. It's Smodix on it again, right foot to delivery. Beyond the far post, headed down by O'Shea. Bournemouth will get on the ball. What can they do on the counter? They've certainly got pace in this side. Tavernier plays it out to the left. Great block from Hutchinson to prevent Semenyo getting on the ball, but he might do now, Semenyo. Kirkes finds him. The cross to the far side goes Moores. He's going to win that battle. Semenyo, no, Semenyo's kept it in. Terrific play. Oh, sliced. By Bournemouth, that was a really good chance for Tavernier after Semenya got the better of Morsey. Two opportunities for Bournemouth in this half. Zabani plays Delap well. And if Delap starting to look a little bit tired, really. Here is uh, Christie for Bournemouth. Out to the left hand side and Kirkes. Clivert shapes to cross, eventually right footer puts it into a dangerous area, not good with a header from Burgess to the right-hand side inside the area. Tavernier just now outside the Ipswich box, back to goal, gives it to Christie. Christie gets away from Taylor, goes to ground, the referee plays an advantage. Bournemouth still have the ball on the right, Smith pulls it in field to Christie, who looks up. Square, he gives it to House, and Bournemouth the better side at the moment, 55 minutes played. Kirkes taken on Hutchison, trying to get his cross in. Comes off Hutchinson, and it goes out of play for a throw-in, signals the referee. Kirkes takes it quickly. Bournemouth playing at a rate of knots at the moment. Yesterday's winners in the Premier League, Aston Villa, Nottingham Forest and uh, Brentford. Get more excitement at Brentford. Six goals at their ground, more goals than any other ground. Christie puts it through to Evan Nielsen, goes round the goalkeeper. Back comes Murich, though. The chance might have gone. Evan Nielsen still has it, shoots. Pings off for Burgess. Back to Evan Nielsen, a real scramble in there. Burgess gets it away. As far as Clivert, his shot is charged down by Chaplin. And just about clinging on to this clean sheet. Yes, they are. You know, there was some decent defending there, but there was also some casualness in the penalty area as well. And fans will be fearing an equaliser, the way this second half has gone. Bournemouth creating one or two chances, they're well on top. Here is Christie, Christie runs through, blocked off by Morsey. And eventually the ball goes through to O'Shea, Arsenal have equalised against Fulham. Town lose the ball, it's all Bournemouth at the moment. Kirk has too heavy a touch, in steps Ben Johnson. Johnson still got the ball, out to the left, excellent play from him. He finds Smodix just underneath us, the number 23 crosses halfway. Davis is op overlapping, Smodix comes in field to Delap. Delap holds it up, needs support, Delap still has the ball. Davis wants it, Delap held on to it all that time, Delap's still got the ball. Davis was frustrated, poor from Delap. that wasn't good enough at all. He had a chance to release it, that was a mistake from him, what can Bournemouth do? Tavernier to Semenyo, Semenyo up against Johnson. Back comes Chapman, Bournemouth middle looking for Evan Nielsen. Well cut out by Burgess, again superb play from him, this time positionally. Chapman carries it away, runs into trouble, goes down, keeps the ball with the Blues, back it goes to Taylor. Davis again, finds Smodix. Smodix goes across field towards O'Shea. O'Shea's header isn't a good one, the crowd are definitely concerned. You can sense that, you can hear it as well, actually, at Portman Road. Semenyu. Back it goes to Kirkes, they're a good side, Bournemouth. And there is Semenyu once again. Still a good game, one which town lead on BBC Radio Suffolk. No goals since half-time. Twelve and a half minutes have been played since then. Bournemouth, much the better team. Housen floats the ball out again to Semenyu. Really liked him this afternoon. Hutchinson gets in on him, well done, Amari Hutchinson takes the ball away from Semenyu, he's all alone, he's got Delap now in support. Hutchinson runs into Zabani, I really like this lad, he can defend. He's such a good player, Zabani, picks out a pass to Kirkes. Town now having to defend. Kirkes pulls the ball back to Christie. Christie, little ball into the box to Kirkes. Kirkes into the middle towards Tavernier. Cleared, only as far as Semenyu hits, deflected. Moritz will prevent the corner kick. He just desperately needs some possession. I don't know why Liam Delap didn't sort of give the ball early to Leif Davis. It's little things like that. Possession always calms you down and gives you a little bit of a chance to take stock. This is helter skelter at the moment. You know, Bournemouth are doing all right. They're getting their possession and they're keeping the ball. They're feeling good about themselves, but we're not. Chaplin's gone down and requires some treatment from uh, Matt Byard. 
uh, the physio. We were chatting earlier on, Mick, about the number of Sunday games that Ipswich Town have had this season. Tottenham and Manchester United. I think Villa was a Sunday. This is even Bristol Rovers next month's a Sunday game. And you told me you never, ever played a Sunday game for Ipswich Town. No, I didn't. I think the very first Sunday I fixture I played in was for Southampton in an FA Cup match at Sheffield Wednesday. So that would have been around about 1984, I think. I don't Incredible. think... I think we just didn't work. Nobody worked on no. Sunday. Shops were shut, weren't and, they? And as far as football was concerned, Thursday was a closing down day. You know, you don't didn't play Thursdays, you didn't play Sundays. Uh, Monday was a rarity. Only Port Vale, I think, ever turned out on a Monday. And <laughs> Tramiro was on a Friday. You know, it was really... It was all isolated. It was either Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday, and that was it. Now it's uh, seven days a week, isn't it? All sorts of random kickoff times as well. And this season, Town play on every day of the week. They have uh, that Thursday game against Brighton, uh, I think it is, here uh, next month. Of course, we become used to Sundays. Chelsea's uh, on a Monday. Arsenal, of course, on a Friday. And we've got a few Saturday games squeezed in every now and again. Uh, very old school Saturday football for Ipswich Town in the uh, Premier League. Uh, an hour gone uh, in this game here at Portman Road. And actually, I saw between the start of September and the 31st of January, Tan have three Saturday games at Portman Road, which is uh, crazy, all the way through September, October, November, December, January. Play back underway. Murich has the ball inside his penalty area, draws in Evan Nielsen. Town still lead 1 0 with uh, half an hour to go in this game. It's going to be a change from the uh, visitors' bench. I think it's uh, Enes Unal, who is the uh, Turkish striker for uh, Bournemouth. He might be uh, coming on for them. That looks to be the change. A spell earlier on his career as a kid at Manchester City. Here is Sam Morsey inside Ipswich Town's half. Forward towards De Lapp in between centre-half and right-back again. Zabani gets the better of him. Zabani then goes back towards Smith. Number 27 looks a right player. Here is uh, Housen. He's a prospect as well, the 19-year-old. Christie to the right-hand side and uh, Smith. Here comes Christie uh, once again, the number 10, looking forward. Spreads play Dagny out to the far side. Semenyu, heavy Ooh. touch from Semenyu. Gives Johnson a chance, he dives in there, Johnson. Who's entitled to go win that ball. Born the fans unhappy. Chapman gives it to Johnson. That was the worst touch Semenyu's had of this game. He almost got back onto it. Hutchinson burrowing his way down the far touchline, but crossing that white line. Yeah, I think we were lucky to get away with that. I thought that was definitely a foul, but uh, we got away with it. It's just one or two. You just want people like Liam Delap to get back to what he was in the first half. Amari Hutchinson to get some sort of decent possession and do the right things. You know, we just need settling down. Ball's come off Tavernier. Davis will see it out behind for a goal kick to Arrow Murich. 17 gone in this second half. So Tanner got Wolves away on Saturday, match day on air from 2 till 6, that's a 3 o'clock kickoff at Molyneux. Following Saturday, another 3 o'clock kickoff when Newcastle uh, come here. And then, of course, after that, Tanner have uh, Christmas games, Arsenal away, Chelsea at home, Fulham away, and then Bristol Rovers in the Cup. Uh, here comes the changes. Going off uh, is Adam Smith, the right back. Uh, definitely attacking changes. So uh, and also Clivert are the two players going off. Clivert and Smith, and on come uh, Unal and uh, Watara. So it's definitely attacking. Lewis Cook seems to have gone to uh, right back for Bournemouth. Max Aarons doesn't seem to be getting many games this season under uh, Iriola. Their first choice right backs currently are injured, so Aarons must be third choice behind Smith. De Lapp with a good cushion header to the far side and Chaplin can Ipswich Town hit Bournemouth with a sucker punch which is what it would be Bournemouth the better team at the moment Town still have that 1-0 lead Chaplin infield to Hutchinson this is good play from Kieran McKenna's side Hutchinson turns back gives it to Morsey on that far side shields the ball away from Christie then holds him off typical dogged play from Morsey Johnson to Chaplin the goal scorer back to Jack Taylor on that far side, Chaplin, infield to Morsey, this is much better from town. Morsey into the D, Delap shot blocked off by Zabani, cleared up towards the halfway line, nicely taken by Unal, just on the field, brought down by Taylor, free kick. 
That was better play there, you know, it was clever play, you know, we just needed that little final ball. I think the early shot from Liam was maybe not the right choice, but at least there was a bit of possession there. That's what we need, just feel your way back into it. It's definitely been Bournemouth's sort of 17, 18 minutes. Paul from Tavernier allows Chapman to get on the ball after that free kick by Bournemouth. Totally wasted, Tan Everett on the centre spot. Delap to Taylor, great ball from Taylor, look at the spot, it's unlucky. Well defended by Cook coming infield, his first test as a, a right back, he needed to make that. Challenge from Morsey into the back of Unal. The ball sprayed back to Kepper. Kepper to the right-hand side, Cook now at right back for Bournemouth, made good ground, gives it towards Watara, wanting to take on Davis, Davis will see the ball out for a goal kick to Aaron Murich. Yeah, terrific defending from Leif Davis, sluggish recovery from uh, Sammy Smodic, he's got to sort of come back a bit earlier, a bit quicker, you know, don't sort of think about it after it's too late, you know, he's always trailing there and he put the pressure on Leif Davis, but he dealt with it really, really well. And we've now got a front two of Evan Nielsen and Unal by the uh, looks of things. Delap with a glancing header on, Cook is there to play it in field to Housen. 65 minutes played on BBC Radio Suffolk Sport. Connor Chapman's goal, still the only one that we've seen so far in this game. Christie for Bournemouth to the left-hand side, Kirkes. Bournemouth have shown their hand first with that double change. Let's see if it can have a positive impact on them. Housen getting over the halfway line, up towards Evan Nielsen. Great take in round the back to Watara, so too Burgess. Burgess does enough and concedes a corner kick. Yeah, he did well again. You know, it's just what he's got to do, and this is what we've all got to do as defenders or midfield players, whatever. You've got to stay firm, mustn't concede. Just see this little spell of pressure from Bournemouth away. Tavernier with a corner kick for the uh, visitors. So plenty life in them with 24 minutes to go in this game. So quarter of the match still to play. They're only 1-0 behind. They're playing well enough at the moment to get back into this game. Tavernier with a corner. Murich comes towards it, double-fisted away. Could have caught it for me. Christie brings it down, takes on Chaplin, gives it back towards Kirkes. Kirkes to the left-hand side. Housen. Housen with a pullback right in front of the referee. Christie then puts it behind the referee to Housen. Housen's cross looks a good one, headed over by uh, Unal. Play again, lovely cross from the centre half. Yeah, he should have done better, Unal. The, the, that cross came in, and you had a situation of there blue, red, blue, red, blue, red, right the way in a line, you know, and you're just thinking, I hope this doesn't land on one of the red shirted players, and it did. And he headed badly for goals. It's a goal kick for uh, Aru Muric. It's going to be uh, fascinating to see how the rest of this game plays out. Still 23 minutes to go. Muric with this uh, long range goal kick puts this one through the centre circle towards Delap. We're headed down by uh, Zabani. Here is that uh, Watara. Oh, Watara does his best to lose the ball. Almost does. Chaplin wins it for town. Davis to Morsey in the middle third. Back to the halfway line. And Jack Taylor rolls it short to his captain. Taylor gets it back off Morsey. On the left-hand side, Davis forward to Chaplin. Chaplin puts it in early, looking for Delap. Touched away, though, by Housen to Christie in front of the Bournemouth back four. Christie to the left-hand side, Semenyo. Kirkaz is marauding forward in front of him. Semenyo's still got the ball, running away from Hutchinson and Johnson. Semenya still has it on the left corner of the Ipswich area. Infield to Tavernier. Tavernier pokes it through straight to Murich. Yeah, it's just when you get a decision slightly wrong, it can cause you problems. I mean, we had a good attack going then, and the final decision to give it to Connor Chaplin, not sorry, Connor Chaplin giving it to Liam Delap instead of Sammy Smodix, killed the whole thing, you know, and uh, lost us the opportunity to create something really worthwhile. Town lead 1 0 live on BBC Radio Suffolk. And they're about to get their first home win of the Premier League season at the eighth attempt. There is Cook coming in centrally from right back, gives it to Watara. Watara in field to Tavernier. Good stretching control. Taylor says he won the ball. The referee said play on. Watara, the number 11 in field. Step over from Unal. Comes to Evan Nielsen. Unal's going to try and get in for the return. It's dragged out behind by Leif Davis under pressure. Nice football from Bournemouth. 
Yeah, he was unlucky there, Leif Davis. He did everything right, and then he just feet just sort of got in the way of each other, and he's en ended up having to give a corner kick away. But at least he's dealt with the situation. Tavernier by the tunnel off to our right hand side Some with pushing going on. Tavernier with his corner kick pulls it back to Christie outside the Ipswich area, shoots at Murich. One that needed the intervention off the head of somebody in its way, really, to deceive the keeper. But Murich saw it cleanly and has dropped down on it to waste a few seconds with 69 gone. Yeah, well, we're pretty much halfway through uh, the second half. It's all been really Bournemouth, you know, pretty much all the time. So let's hope that, uh, you know, we keep it at 1 0 and then we improve. Here we go. Town rubbed the ball back on halfway. Hutchinson flying down the right hand side, gets up towards the edge of the air, a couple of step overs, takes on House and beats him. In comes his cross to the far stick, and Smodic's headed in field by the defender. Cook brought down by Christie. Excellent play from Christie. He distributes out to the right hand side, which turns out to be the Ipswich left because Davis gets there ahead of Watara. Morsey on the halfway line to. Jack Taylor, Smodic's back to Taylor, Taylor helps it on its way to Leif Davis, Davis chips it infield towards Dara O'Shea, and of course with just the one clean sheet so far this season in that draw down at Brighton, good point that, Hutchinson to Morsey up to Delap who can turn, Delap puts it through for Smodic's, a chance for 2-0, back to Delap after the save from Kepa. Oh, you wonder if Ipswich Town are going to rue that opportunity, and that was a really good one. And it was brilliant play as well, terrific build-up play and a great chance. Yeah, Smollett still looking for that first Portman Road goal. That was a chance for it. Tavernier gets away from a tiring Delap. Tavernier still has it in the centre of the Ipswich Town half. Taylor goes down on one knee, can't win it. Tavernier finds Christie, can't take your eyes off this one. Kirkes versus Hutchinson. I wonder how tired some of these Bournemouth players are now chasing this game. They played on Thursday night, remember? Housen back towards Christie, Christie to the edge area and Unal, Unal holds it up well, tries to turn it round the corner, Chaplin is he caught, no says the referee, play on, Tavernier to the right, and Cook the number four stands on the ball with the studs of his right boot, up against Smodix, Cook puts a good ball in there, punched away again by Murich, that was threatening. Smodix up towards Delap. Delap holds it up, needs some help, loses the ball, Zabani wins it, free kick this time to Ipswich Town. Yeah, is, it, is he getting tired, uh, Liam Delap? He's sort of like his decision making is a little bit slow. It just maybe he's a bit, gone a bit sluggish in his uh, thinking and he's not quite what he was in the first half. No, he hasn't. So hard to play that role as we kick in. No backup of George Hurst, who'd possibly be on by now. Yeah, very much so. That's when the manager would automatically be making a change. But he's got to play, he's got to start games to lap in the absence of Hurst. 27 minutes played in the second half, Kieran McCann having a long look at one of the screens down below us. Murich belts this free kick long, Delap brings it down side there, what a touch from Delap, gives it towards Smodix, his attempt on goal is blocked by a defender right in his way. Cleared away by Bournemouth, headed forward by Davis, Delap goes towards the ball, but... Tavernier is there, Tavernier tries to scoop it around Taylor, Taylor does well, he read that, then he goes down, free kick given the way of yes. Ipswich Town, Kieran McKenna applauds above his head, I think it's going to be another change for Bournemouth, it's uh, David Brooks, former Sheffield United player, started his career at Manchester City, the uh, Welshman, very talented footballer, he's about to come on, possibly for uh, Tavernier, I don't see them bringing off um, Semenyo, it's a double change, Billing, tall midfielder, the Dane is going to be coming on. Free kick, Leif Davis has taken it for Ipswich Town, a lot closer to halfway than the edge of the Bournemouth penalty area. It's going to travel a distance, this, from the number three, he's got both hands in the air, that's the signal. 17 minutes to go at Portman Road, Town lead 1-0, what can Davis do from this free kick? He puts it forward towards the header of... O'Shea nodded back by Delap, a chance for Chaplin, his attempt was a good one, blocked off by a defender in front of him. Bournemouth can't clear their lines, pill for a handball by only a couple of Ipswich players, Bournemouth get it out far side. Yeah, it was a good ball in, almost got a set up there with uh, Connor Chaplin, uh, just 
dare I say, are we slowly improving? Are we slowly getting back into this game? It'd be nice to think we could finish nicely. Here's a change. It is Tavernier who's uh, coming off to be replaced by Brooks. And uh, Billing is also coming on the field for uh, Evan Nielsen. So uh, gone back to just that one central striker in Unal, but uh, Billing will be a threat. Semenya is maybe drifting into a central area. Billing who does get goals, a tall player, a uh, midfielder, six foot six, former Huddersfield man. So he played for them in the Premier League before he got his move to the south coast. Ben Johnson with a throw. Infield it comes, cleared away by Housen. Onto the chest far side of Watara, stumped forward by Morsey, all the way back to Kepa. Those numbers again, have a chat to Graham and Mick afterwards. 0800 141 2121 or text 81333, start those messages. SFK, WhatsApp 08000 321 333, again start those SFK. Hopefully, referring to Pitch Town's second Premier League win of the season there. First at Portman Road. Smodix into the centre of Morsey. Morsey dabs it forward to Chaplin, the only goal scorer so far. Red by Cook, who's slotted in well at right back. Gets the better of a bit of tumbling oh, no. in front of us. Kieran McKenna lifts them, lifting the crowd down below us, singing to them. Brooks with a throw in for Bournemouth. Town have got 15 minutes plus added on time to either hold on or extend their advantage. Watara's definitely gone across the left side where he played against Tottenham the other night. Brooks is on the right. Here is Watara. Underneath the Bournemouth fans taking on Hutchinson, getting a ball into the box in. Will step O'Shea. Solid as ever. O'Shea clears off the backside of Brooks back towards Murich inside his penalty box. That's OK, regroup and let's get going again. Here's the ball, uh, Murich. To turn at Wolves on Saturday. Start the build up on the match day preview this uh, coming Friday between 6 and 7. The return of uh, John Walkie, Miss Walkie. On last week's show, plenty for him to uh, talk about in that hour. And then it's two till six match day. Look alongside me at um, Molyneux, cleared forward by O'Shea. The challenge on Hutchinson sees it come off Kirkes. And for throwing the 29,180. We're used to it being north of 29,000 attendances here at Portman Road. There is uh, Johnson up against Watara, turns the ball down the line to Chaplin, Chaplin turns away from Christie, terrific play from Chaplin, almost eventually comes away with the ball in the end after being tripped and a bit of stumbling, Christie, terrible slice on that attempted pass to the far side of Watara, it's out for Ray, uh, throw in. Yeah, they're giving the ball away a little bit more than they did in that sort of first 20 minutes of the second half and we're slightly improving ourselves, so... Uh, Maybe we could go on and... Kieran McKenna just pulled up his hood uh, down below us. Cleared away from the back by O'Shea. Nice control by Christie on the halfway line, giving it to Brooks. Played in that town win over Southampton here on April Fool's Day. There is Billing, just on as a sub, links up with Cook, Cook in field, well done by Taylor. Went with the run of Brooks, intercepted the ball, Davis back to Burgess, Burgess is clearance, rolls up the chest of uh, Delap, Zabani gets the better of him again. All due respect to Bournemouth, based on what's in Zabani, he's destined for uh, bigger things. To Housen, Housen back in field to... Christie, Christie up towards Brooks, Brooks stretches, can't control it. Davis gets it away to Liam Delap. Robbed by Billing, goes down, twisting. The referee's in a good position, says play on. Semenya for Bournemouth inside the area. Semenya should say by Murich, and then cleared out behind. Right up against where it says Sir Ralph Ramsey. On the top of the standoff to our right-hand side by Burgess. He almost kicked the ball out of the ground. Yeah, he just wanted it out of the penalty, uh, penalty area there. That uh, uh, just... Got a little opportunity there again. It was pretty much Liam Delap who looked so tired. You know, I think that he's sort of uh, had enough. Really, you know, he got caught in possession. He, he was on the ball a long time. Corner kick to Bournemouth, approaching the final ten minutes. All eyes off to our right hand side, and it comes from Billing. Good header away by Burgess, a serious contender for man of the match. Here is. Uh, 
Christie for Bournemouth. Belling wants it in the box and it comes towards Belling beyond the far post. Even with those long legs of his, he couldn't do anything with it in terms of diverting it into a central area. Yeah, and those two players on the far side, I think it was Amari Hutchinson and Smodix, didn't see that run at all and uh, that could have been an excellent run if the ball had been a little bit sort of softer. You know, we've got to see things quickly, you know. Semenya is down. I thought it looks like a troubling injury for uh, Bournemouth, but that's good news for Ipswich Town. He is a real threat to this scoreline, as far as we're concerned. Al Hamidi and Jack Clark about to come on for uh, Ipswich Town. He was lively when he came on the other day, Al Hamidi. Yeah, he was. Uh, Jack Clark readying himself uh, again. So Bournemouth are preparing to make a change. They'll be desperate to keep Semenya out there. Seems to be his uh, left calf is causing him problems. Here comes the change. Uh, Smodix going off. Still waiting for that first Portman Road goal. He's going to be replaced by uh, Jack Clark. And uh, Liam Delap is going off as well after putting in a, another terrific shift. He'll be replaced by Al Hamidi, who's just getting a hug and some words of advice from his captain, Sam Morsey. He uh, also welcomes Jack Clark to the fray, says goodbye to Sam Smodix. Not walking at all freely, uh, Antoine Semenyo. I think Kieran McKenna has spotted the two that are really sort of suffering. Um, they've got slower and slower as the sort of game has gone on. Smodix has still made a couple of nice runs into the box, but down this left-hand side, he's sort of offering less and less assistance to Leif Davis. Another chance for Ali Alhamidi to show what he's uh, all about. Second choice striker at the moment for Ipswich. Uh, Brighton leading 2 0 at Leicester. That's a good result as far as Ipswich Town are concerned. Brighton bouncing back after a, a rare defeat for them uh, the other night. They're a good side. People will enjoy seeing Brighton at Portman Road next month. Johnson up towards the chest of Alhamidi, holds it up against House and gives it back to Johnson. Good confidence boosting first involvement for the uh, Iraqi. Chaplin from tight from the far touch and looping it forward towards Al Hamidi up against House and goes down. Nothing doing, says the referee. House and sees the ball out for a town throw, and that was an error for him after some decent defending. It certainly wasn't a foul. The officials got that decision right. Semenya is back on the field to help Bournemouth defend this throw in. Nine minutes to go at Portman Road. No one bothered about the wind and the rain and the cold temperatures because their team is leading 1-0 on the majority here, thanks to this man. Chaplin crosses into the middle towards Jack Clark, might be a chance for Alhamdi, headed down by Zabani, then Jack Clark has a swipe at it. And as far as Davis, Taylor knocks it back into the box, Chaplin battles for it, Chaplin shoots and his shot is wide, Kepler wouldn't have got there. And uh, he appeals for a corner kick, the referee disagrees, he's pointing towards the edge of the six-yard area for a goal kick. I think it was a corner. Yeah, you're looking at their reaction, it seemed to be. They were convinced. It's a good effort from Chapman. Kepper was rooted as well. I could have seen that being goal number two. Zabani towards Semenyu. Up against O'Shea. In goes Billing. A real threat from set pieces. Clark with a chest trap to Morsey. Morsey can't get the ball forward, gives it square to Chaplin. Hutchinson's made a run, Chaplin to the edge of the area. Town looking for a second goal to seal this first home win. Morsey still has the ball, eventually loses it. Billing chips it to the left-hand side, brought down by Watara. O'Shea lost his footing, Bra Bournemouth a three-on-one. Semenya inside the area, Semenya plays it off, Burgess in the way, out for a corner kick, but wow! What a let-off that was, Bournemouth should have done better, but again, credit to the magnificent Cameron Burgess. Yeah, very much so. You know, at least he's made it difficult for the three of them, you know, they didn't allow the runs to happen and he's blocked the uh, cross, so well done Cameron Burgess. Awful mistake by Town up the other end. Wasn't it? Three on one for Bournemouth that was, that was horrible. Billing with a corner kick for Bournemouth, seven minutes to go, oh, missed by Murich, but he's been fouled under pressure on his near post, free kick to Ipswich Town. It's not going to be particularly comfortable viewing this next seven minutes. Murich is now holding the base of his back, wasting a bit more time as another sub is sent out from the uh, bench down below us. Yeah, clearly gets a shove in the back from Semenyo, uh, I think it was. Yep. Which, uh, good call from the uh, officials. Town still lead 1-0. Connor Chaplin 
the goal scorer. Looking for the first home clean sheet of the season, but more importantly, the first home Premier League win for Kieran McKenna. Cleared long by Murich, glanced on by Al Hamadi. Zabani is there. The keeper doesn't want it. Zabani lifted over the top of Clark into space and Cook. Cook brings it up towards the halfway line. He gives it to Brooks. Stumbled over the ball, allowed Jack Clark to get in there. I wouldn't have thought too many people are leaving this one early. Zabani back to Kepper. Six minutes to go. We played exactly 84 at Portman Road live on BBC Radio Suffolk. I think it's James Hill, the defender, is about to come on for Bournemouth. Kirkes to Watara, trying to play the return ball to Kirkes, but O'Shea read it. O'Shea finds Davis. Davis touches it in front of him, tries to get away from Brooks. Brooks holds him up infield to Taylor. Taylor finds Clark. Clark can't keep on to the ball. The referee says no foul. I think he's had a decent game, the referee, this afternoon. A few town fans might disagree at this exact second, but didn't see too much wrong with that. There weren't any complaints out there either. Semenyu lifted over the top of Morsey. Morsey heads it onto the chest of Alhamidi. Chaplin involved to Clark in the centre. Clark onto Alhamidi. The referee's played an advantage. Alhamidi will have to go it alone. Semenyu pulls him back. That is going to be a free kick. Well spotted by the uh, referee for the foul on Alhamidi, who's holding his right ankle. 40 minutes played in this second half. Hill is coming on for Bournemouth. He's going to be replacing uh, Ryan Christie. Alhamidi did exactly the right thing there, sort of run it into a sort of negative area, look for a free kick, he got that. He's been good, he's come on and he's uh, just looked fresher than Liam. You know, Liam was excellent when he was uh, in the first half, but he sort of died on the whole game. And the two substitutions, Clark has looked lively coming on. He's sort of supplemented Smodic's sort of tiredness, if you like. And, and Al Hamadi has done exactly the same for Liam Gillette. Four and a half minutes to go. There will be a few minutes of added on time, though. Davis with this free kick towards O'Shea inside the area. Out as far as Taylor, who hits it, comes off the backside of Alhamdi. That was travelling. Ipswich Town keeping up the pressure, looking for a killer second goal. Davis in the box to Chaplin. Shots wide. How many times have those two linked up this past couple of years? They did it again there, but on this occasion, off his left side, Chaplin put it a fair few yards off that far post. Town, though, still lead 1 0. James Hill on for. The last few minutes of this game for uh, Bournemouth. Played here with Fleetwood a few years ago. James Hill, his dad actually, Matt Hill, played here for Preston on a couple of occasions. He was a teammate of Wes Burns at Fleetwood, now a fully fledged Premier League player. Kirk has a Bournemouth trying to put it in behind for Wataro. Murich has come towards the ball, he's missed it. Maybe a headed goal. It's 1 1. Bournemouth have equalised. Aro Murich has made an almighty mess of that. An absolutely shocking moment. McMill's head drops alongside me. Heads all around are dropping. Ipswich Town's wait for this first home win in the Premier League goes on. Oh, my goodness me. That what was awful to see. Two minutes to go. Little bit more at Portman Road. And Murich has gifted Bournemouth an equaliser. What a big, big mistake. No real threat. That was hard not to swear. Really hard. Well, one point from Palace and Bournemouth as things stand. After all the good football Bournemouth have played, and when they were knocking on the door, particularly the first 20 minutes of this half, you're ex expecting a goal to come and it to be something special. But a goal has eventually come, although there's a VAR check at the moment. Play has continued. I think it's going to stay 1-1. So poor, so, so poor. Well, maybe Newcastle, or maybe this afternoon, maybe Ipswich Town, you write them off at your peril, they can still go on and win this 1-2-1. But, wow, this is the second longest in the club's history, whatever division they've gone without a home win, just that awful season of 18-19, they went 11 games before beating uh, Wigan on their way to relegation. I feel so sorry for them down there. Kieran McKenna amongst them. Billing on the halfway line. Taylor wins it back for Ipswich Town, but it's a foul on Bournemouth. 
Kicked long by Zabani, he's been brilliant. Watara into the middle, across the face of goal. Not even sure who the goal's been credited to in the end, whether it was Watara or whether it was Unal or whether it was an own goal or what it was. It was very messy with all eyes on Aru Muric. Davis with a throw in for Ipswich Town. It's Ipswich Town 1, Bournemouth 1. Well, no second clean sheet of the season, whatever the scoreline. Out it goes, through to Ipswich Town. Davis to take it. Kieran McKenna's thoughts on the way. Yours very welcome as well. 0800 141 21. Semenu on this right hand side. Infield towards Brooks. Brooks up towards Unal. Toe poke from Burgess. Cleared by O'Shea. Brought down by uh, Zabani. Housen to the left and Kirkes. Kirkes infield to Hill, who is playing in midfield, the centre half. The crowd doing their bit, getting right behind it, touch town, they need it. 30 seconds of normal time to go. Cook coming in field for Bournemouth, still has it, intercepted by Morsey, read that situation brilliantly, Al Hamadi has it, surrounded by four red and black shirts, he's got it back to Hutchinson, all he could do, good play. Uh, so Hutchinson's dragged down to the ground by Brooks, who knows exactly what's coming from the referee's back pocket and can't have any complaints. No, he was away, Omari, you know, it was, uh, we managed in the end to sort of get possession of it, get it out to Omari, and he was away, and he's just waiting to pull, pull, to pull down. Burns and Kiyuste coming on for it, which has six minutes of added on time to be played. Difficult to know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, really, because Bournemouth could still go on and win this game, but at least it gives Town an opportunity to win at home for the first time this season as well. Murich, how desperate is he for Town to take the lead again after his pass in the equaliser? Headed on by O'Shea, volleyed away by Zabani. Up goes Davis, got enough on the ball. Johnson runs into trouble, slides, gets it out to the left and Clark, Semenyo's down on the deck, Bournemouth playing with ten men, Cook intercepts, Cook still has the ball, to Hill near side, Semenyo's out of play, good charging down by Taylor, and he's possibly going to make way for uh, Kiyuste, here come the changes for Ipswich Town, yeah that's it for uh, Jack Taylor, done well enough on his uh, first Premier League start, a day he'll remember forever, off he comes, Kiyuste comes on for him, and it's uh, Hutchinson, a rare 90 minutes for Connor Chaplin uh, in the Premier League. Hutchinson goes off, and it is Burns' opportunity to terrorise the left-hand side of Bournemouth's defence. I'd love to see Wes Burns have an impact here and create or score a winning goal for Ipswich Town. Some of the criticism of him recently has been ridiculous. Disgraceful to somebody who's done so much for this club in recent seasons. Not forward by Cook, headed down by O'Shea. Clark keeps it in, back the ball goes to Davis. 90 seconds into the added on six. Not there's been a lot of play in that six minutes so far. Zabani gets the better of Al Hamadi. Not forward by Housen. Burgess wins it above Brooks. Touched down by Billing. Here is uh, Semenyu trying to get between a couple of players. He's got it to Brooks. Back to Billing. Billing with a switch of play to Watara, who brings it down his left instep. Beautiful control. Infield it goes. Burns puts it behind for a corner kick to Bournemouth. Yeah, it's better than making a mistake. But, oh, goodness uh, me, Leicester have equalised against Bryson. Corner kick taken quickly by Bournemouth, edge of the area. Watara gives it to Billing. Billing gets right underneath that one. Very ambitious effort, it loops over the bar. And it's still 1-1. And kind of scratches his head down below us. It's a difficult one. Do you want to go in now or do you want to wait for a last chance? <laughs> yeah, yeah, here comes uh, Muric to kick the ball off the edge of his six-yard area. Still three and a half minutes to go. He's now getting grief for uh, taking his time and replacing the ball on the edge of his six-yard area. Kicks it downfield. Al Hamidi goes there. Zabani to Unal with a header. Forward from uh, Semenyu. I might have picked up that. I've been impressed by uh, Zabani at the back for Bournemouth. And he's as good as anything I've seen at centre half based on this performance that this season. He's been really, really impressive uh, in this game. Very comfortable at the back for them. Here is uh, Johnson with a throw in. Hopefully, I've tempted fate and he has an awful error towards the end of this match. That would be just ideal. Handball by Morsey. And we've gone beyond the midway point of the added on 
six minutes. I thought it's also welcome on tour night. It's Blue Hour between uh, six and seven on BBC Radio Suffolk. Email me, Brenner at bbc.co.uk. I can guess the flavour of some of your uh, 90 and fives if things stay as they are. Here is um, Housen. Housen plays it off of Burns into touch far side for a throw into Bournemouth. How ambitious oh, yeah, are they going to yeah. be? <laughs> the attempt to throw in, Bournemouth get forward again with a header from Brooks, but it's straight at O'Shea, Morsey on to Chaplin, back to Morsey, forward to al Hamidi in the way is Zabani, and he wins a 50-50, and he looked to have lost the ball, Kirkes infield to Brooks, Brooks infield to Billing, forward come Bournemouth, they still fancy winning this game, they're not settling for a 1-1, Semenya back to Billing inside the area, Billing into the middle, saved by Murich, but it's 2-1, Bournemouth have won it! Watara hammers it into the net. Ipswich Town just minutes away from their first home Premier League win of the season and they're not even going to get a point. It's Ipswich Town 1, Bournemouth 2. What a sickener. Well, that's heartbreaking, it really is. You know, we were just... We just lacked a little bit of no hell on the halfway line there. There was a couple of times when, you know, it was our ball and we've given Bournemouth an opportunity after opportunity after opportunity. And then all of a sudden, they had numbers, you know, they had op options in a good area down this right-hand side. And in the end, they've, they've got, created an opportunity and they put it in the back of the net. But we're sort of toiling to get back in, you know, after the errors that we have made. Well, well, isn't it? And it's going to be so hard for Ipswich Town this season, we know that. But results like these last two put a major dent in their hopes of a second successive season at this level. Long, long way to go, of course, but wow. You can't throw away points like this. You look at Forest, no great shakes last week. You look at Palace in the week, no great shakes. They're both them won in Bournemouth. Look as if they're winning this game. There is a VAR check for an offside at the moment going on. It's very, very close. Wow. Yeah, I'd say it's offside. What a big moment in Ipswich Town season this yeah, could be. Keeping our fingers crossed. We've just got a freeze frame at the moment. Yeah. I don't know which way this is going to go. You'll know whether there's a massive groan or a huge cheer. Fingers crossed a huge cheer and it's still 1-1. Life in the Premier League. The cheer comes from the Bournemouth fans, the groans from the town supporters. Watara celebrates again. It's 2 1 Bournemouth. We have a right first time around. O'Shea goes long. Al Hamidi just evades him, took his eye off the ball. Will we see more drama in this game? Fingers crossed we do. Headed away by Hill to halfway. Big win this for Bournemouth off the back of winning on Tuesday and then coming here, being 1 0 down for so long, gifted an equaliser and then give them their due. Here is Watara over on the far side, still time to play. We've gone beyond the added on six minutes because of that goal celebration. Infield to Brooks. Watara plays it back to Kirkes. One or two whistles, but all from supporters. Back it goes to Kepa. This is a hard one to take, it really is. Shocker of a week for Ipswich Town. Nine days really, including last Saturday. Kirkes gives it away. Town with Chaplin. So long it looked like he was going to be the match winner. Blocked off by Brooks. Gets away from Morsey. Brooks takes it on himself. Brooks still has it. Closed down well by Morsey. Who thought about tugging him back. But that would have been a crazy yellow card at this stage of the game. It's gone out for a corner kick to Bournemouth. Surely just seconds away from a victory over Ipswich Town. Just looking on the TV screen down below, so it zoomed in on the town bench. Nathan Broadhead's head is bowed. This is a terrible result for Ipswich Town, it has to be said. Bournemouth corner kick right at the end of this match. Over in the far corner, Jack Clark trying to take it off his man. Bournemouth happy to have the ball in that corner. Clark goes down free kick to Ipswich. How much is he going to play the referee? He's almost played eight minutes of added on time. Must be worth a fairly lengthy trip in terrible conditions for those Bournemouth supporters this Sunday afternoon. Time to get one more chance to win a home game before Christmas. Murich kicks it, 2-1 Bournemouth win. That is it.
And that's a horrible, horrible result for Kieran McKenna, his players and this club's fans. Their wait for a home win in the Premier League goes on. They've got one or more opportunity to get a home victory before Christmas when Newcastle come here in a couple of weeks' time. But ultimately, they've thrown one away here this afternoon, leading 1-0 for so long. A huge mistake from Murich allowed Bournemouth to equalise and then they snatched all three points at the death. They've won 2-1. Well, that's, that's just terrible, isn't it, Mikko? The, the feeling after the back, off the back of that result is, is awful. You can see it on the, the players' faces, looking at Wes Burns there down below us on the TV screen. That's a, a bad, bad loss, isn't it? Oh, it's very much so. It really is. I mean, it's, it was one that for a long time, certainly first half, I thought, you know, we could win this quite, not comfortably, but we could win it. We were the best side and we deserved to be in front. Didn't like the way we opened the second half. Uh, Bournemouth had a really good, maybe 20-minute spell. Uh, but we were weathering the storm and we came through that and we were just beginning to sort of do one or two things. And, and we've got so close to the end where we've got our hands on three points and the first win at home this season and it's taken a massive error by the goalkeeper to actually change that situation because at that stage you started to think we are going to do it you know we haven't played particularly well in the second half we had one or two very very tired players in that period of time Kieran tried to freshen things up as much as possible but it was a big big error that caused all the problems and and once Bournemouth got one uh, to be perfectly honest, I think I did say, you know, what, what would you take? Would you rather go in or wait to see if there's one last chance? I would have gone in, I really would, because Bournemouth was still slightly the better side and if there was going to be a late chance, it probably was going to be Bournemouth. And, and what they've done is not only have they taken two points off us, but they've taken three off us in the end, you know, so... Uh, frightening. So where, where are you on Aaron Murich? He's going to be getting a lot of stick, a lot of fans haven't taken to him from the word go and Mick, I mean how big a question mark is there over him now and, and Christian Walton's chances of coming in after a, a moment like that and just in general, just what are your thoughts on him? Well I think he's an okay goalkeeper, I don't think he's an improvement on what we had last season uh, Christian Walton He's the most patient guy, I think, in the world. I mean, he had the, the hardship of losing his place to uh, uh, Vladky last year in extreme circumstances where he wasn't, he wasn't fit for the first game of the season. Vladky came in, absolutely outstanding season, never gave Christian a chance to come back in. And then, ironically, the same thing happened this season where... where Murich was coming in without doubt to be the number one. Um, he was injured for the first game. Uh, Christian Walton played, played very well. But the manager went in the reverse to what he did, you know, in the championship season. And Christian lost his place. Now, I've, I've all along, you know, since Christian has come into the club, said that once he had learnt how to pass the ball like the manager wanted him to, we had a very, very good goalkeeper, and that's all I can go by now. I think that Christian Walton deserves an opportunity. But, you know, you have to be patient. How many sort of mistakes does uh, Murich have to make for Christian to get his chance? Well, I think this is one too many for me, and I, I, I do feel that Christian should be the man to, to be given a chance. You know, he's, he's, he deserves a chance, and I think you should give him it. Yeah, I think those sentiments will be echoed by a lot of uh, Ipswich Town fans tonight as well. Your thoughts welcome on this one. 0800 141 2121. I'm going to go downstairs and give Kieran McKenna a hug, I think, before I uh, mic up his interview. That will come as soon as we can possibly get it to you. Uh, match day this Sunday is on air till 5 o'clock. Your thoughts very welcome. I can't believe I'm saying this on a 2-1 defeat. Ipswich Town led for so long, but I haven't got anything from Bournemouth's visit.